Matured with Kathy's knowledge and experience, you will be on the winning team. Onsite Care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. Onsite Care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, Onsite Care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now Onsite Care welcomes Darren Wright, a board certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865 285 9588 to schedule an appointment at Onsite Care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors, together we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at roanstate.edu now, and let's succeed together. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. The Free Medical Clinic of Oak Ridge presents New Year's Eve 2024 Countdown on Sunday, December 31st, 2023 at 9 p.m. to January 1st, 2024 at 1 a.m. Live band, food truck, hot air balloons, sponsored by Tennessee College of Applied Technology, Baird, the City of Oak Ridge, David Coffee, BBB Communication, and Holloway Event Company. Ball drop and fireworks. Come with your friends and family to count down the new year together. Don't miss it. Free to the public. For more information, go to fmcor.org. At Ferris, we want you to get the most out of your time and end each day feeling good. That's why we pioneered exclusive lawnmower suspension technology, allowing for full speed mowing even over the roughest terrain. Grow your business by getting more done in less time with Ferris. Ferris, work hard, feel good. Found exclusively at independent Ferris dealers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. to the Free Michael Clay Friday Night Scoreboard. David Quirk, Jonathan Cox, we're glad to be with you. Week 10 in the books. What I guess, would you, would you say, would you say the biggest, and I don't think this is a surprise, this is the way it should be anyway, are you surprised that Maribel beat Alcoa tonight? I'll start it off with that. No. I'm, I don't really think it's a surprise no. neither. I've got a good friend uh, whose son plays baseball with us. He goes to Alcoa football games all the time. His wife's a principal, his principal over there. And uh, I think Alcoa, I think Alcoa and Maribel both know that where they have been and where they are right now this season is two totally different things. So even though they've won a lot of football games, they're not Alcoa good and Maribel's not Maribel good. And he was worried that they would he was, he was worried they would lose just because of inexperience and turnovers on offense, and that's exactly what happened. I think they had four turnovers. So, no, I'm never surprised when Maryville wins. Hey, you just don't – man, you just don't pick against them. You know, I'm a, I'll am take them every time, and then you just have to 
prove me wrong that I was wrong. You just have to beat him to prove me wrong. So. How about Boyd Buchanan, Gary Rankin in his second year beating Webb tonight, who was undefeated. So he's yeah, turned that around pretty quick. They said, uh, I say they, they were, everybody was talking that they didn't think Boyd Buchanan would win that game tonight because he had a lot of, he has a lot of kids hurt. I don't know if he does or not. I know zero, absolutely zero about him and zero about Webb. It's not two teams that's on my radar. He knows and a little I bit about winning. Him. Well, he does know a little bit about winning. <laughs> I'll give you that. Yeah. I don't think he, there's any stop he's ever had. He's not won, has he? One just about everywhere he's at. Riverdale Alco and Boy Buchanan, I would say this is by far the least attractive job he's ever taken. You would have to think. Well. I don't know where he started his career, but Riverdale and Alco is two pretty it, good jobs. It don't really matter where he started. He's yeah. he's a winner wherever he's at. Yeah. So he turns programs around, turns them around pretty quickly. Did you so. see the end of the Knox Central Heritage game last night? I did. I did. I, I felt did. I felt sorry for the kid that he dropped a pass. I mean, he was wide open. He dropped a pass. It was was Central not up at one time? Yeah, they were up twenty something nothing. They were up. I don't know about twenty something nothing, but they were up. Uh, were up most of the game, and uh, Central's defense is just Central is not the Central they were three or four years ago, back when they were making their state championship run. Completely different football team. Don't even look like the same football team to me. You talk about a team that's went from ten to to two. That's a team that's went from ten to two. Uh, they're they're not the same football team that they used to be. Both teams on Broadway. Yep. Fulton, I don't know that Fulton you wins could. three state championships in a row. There's a couple of years where they don't win one. Central wins two in a row, and now both teams combined have 60 players. You might have a hard time taking both those teams together and putting them together and getting a 500 football team even. Because Central did not look, you know, when you're going to Heritage, and no knock on Heritage, but when you're just what Heritage has been in the past. Heritage Heritage. Heritage is Heritage. When you go into Heritage and you got to win that game to get in the playoffs and you struggle to do that, there's a there's, there's problem. I don't know what the problem is. I see where AE got a win tonight. Where? Uh, who whoever they? whoever they were playing. I don't remember who they were playing. Uh, okay. Union, Union County, maybe? Okay. I think that's right. Maybe I looked seen them coach T. a minute ago. Union County. So, uh, that's just a couple. Clinton wins a night over Corns. Has a pretty good offensive night. I think it's 48-18. Uh, seen where Campbell County beat Morristown wet East, I think, tonight. Uh, I'm trying to think what the score was. I seen the score. I'm going to say 41, 31, What's that, or 30. Bearden? No, Campbell County and Morristown oh. East. Oh, East. Campbell East. County won that game tonight. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't see Bearden tonight. Bearden, Bearden beat Morristown West like 28 14 or 24 17 or Is something. Is that tonight? Like that. that was tonight. Okay. Yeah. Sevier County. What are they doing playing East Hamilton? That's an odd game. You would think with all the schools in Sevier County and the region they're in, they wouldn't have a hard time finding game. You would think that anyway. So yeah, Did I think you hear the story, and I'm sure people are still traveling, so we can just jab a little bit here. Did you hear the story about Greenville High School not being able to practice football yesterday? No. TBI had a most wanted out for a guy who escaped prison, last spotted in Greene County. I, I do know that part's true, but I didn't know anything about a football. No Parents football started practice. complaining about basketball players after school working out, and they shut down the football and the basketball extracurricular activities in the city of Greenville and Greene County. Yeah, I think some of the charges on that guy that escaped oh, yeah. were pretty, yeah, yeah neat, probably just a safety thing. I understand. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. you can always practice another day, but uh, yeah. Apparently didn't affect Greenville tonight. They won pretty yeah. big from what I seen earlier uh, on Coach T. I've not seen it up there on the ticker, but I'm sure it is. Coach Bradlin texts the picture of the story of the guy and said. They've not had good luck this year. This said, game's getting what, canceled. His, and, his text said, what's next? <laughs> yeah, oh, really, that's what I'm saying. You know, game's getting canceled and and and, and stuff like that. I mean, they've, uh, they've, had a, they've had a pretty, you know, a pretty tough year. I thought the, the Cofield and Oliver Springs game tonight was really a good ball game. I, in my opinion, anyway, just my opinion, somebody just sitting at the house watching it, uh, I thought Oliver Springs pretty much dominated the first half, 
and then Cofield being Cofield comes back and do Cofield, does Cofield stuff, and, and you know they find a I way got, to they just find a way to win. They just I find a, a way to. I got a text saying Alco or I got a text saying excuse me that Oz the qu it says is Oz really the better team? Well, that's a good question. T tonight you would say no. Okay. Tonight you would. First half, yes. First half, yes. That's me, it's David. All right. I, you know, and you know I'm a huge Cofield guy. And uh, tonight, Auber, I thought Auburn Springs had a really good first half. And uh, but uh, Cofield just being Cofield, man. They just do Cofield things, and they just went. They just find ways. You know, they just find ways to win. So, will they uh, play each other in the playoffs? Probably second or third round. Yes, they will. Third round it'll be a second. It'll be a third round probably, but it, there will be a game for. They'll Cole be the Miller. one in the two seed in the region. Yeah, probably so. Okay. Yeah, that's the way it's going to fall. Looks like. Yep. So. Uh, you know the way they've laid this out now. Week eight is such a bust. Week nine and week ten though, it's all region. So I would give anything for you to been here last week because you would have had a really good. You'd have. You'd still be laughing about it. So it's laughable enough, and I'm going to tell you about it. So you know our favorite fan that calls in that says he's an Oak Ridge fan, but oh, yeah. I really think he's a closet Clinton fan. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I really do think that, and he says he's got these people that watch us, and then they call him and tell him we're talking about him. Well, we don't really waste a lot of time talking about. It. But I'll just tell you, he called in last week. And he said, you know, Oak Ridge had a good loss tonight. A good loss. A good loss. It was a good loss that they lost to Beard. It was a good loss. It sure was. Good loss. When did, Alco or when did uh, Oak Ridge start having good losses? I don't know. I guess that's on Is that the, just the standard of the program? That's the standard of the program. That was just a good loss. They're not competing with the best of the best. They're no. just hoping to hoping hang around. Hoping to hang around. Good loss. A good loss. You know, they're chalking up good losses now. Butch Jones, yeah. moral victories. <laughs> moral victories. Champions yeah. of heart. What is champ? Yeah. But whatever it was that you used yeah. to say. Five star heart. Yeah. They uh, had a good loss. I chuckled about that all weekend last weekend. That's a clown it's, comment. Is a good, you know, is a is really good loss. So maybe he won't call in tonight. Maybe they won't be able to find us on the TV because we've changed our channel's not channel twelve anymore. Ten eighty six is what I heard. Yeah. You get that, you have contact? No, no, but I got a text tonight saying to make sure that we announced It's ten eighty six. That we are channel ten. You can get it on ten eighty one or ten eighty six. Yes, we are. It has if you're watching us on a device maybe right now and you say I can't get it on T V and you got Comcast and you're in Clinton or down here in Oak Ridge or somewhere, it's 1086 or 1081 on Comcast. Uh, we're not Channel 12 anymore. That's a Knoxville community channel now, but we are 1081 or 1086. So uh, you, you can grab us there. Nothing's changed on anything that we were on on social media stuff. It's all the same. Still get us at the same place. They just, Comcast decided they didn't like us being Channel 12 no more and moved us up in, uh, with the big boy channels. So. It's probably the ratings from this show. Yeah, I probably would have just shot it up. So yeah, much, drove it know, to 1086. Drove it to, but we're 1086 now, so. Yeah. I don't know if you had Comcast over where you was at. Don't say you need to check it out. And I just can't see if afford you get Comcast. To. We got YouTube. Oh, YouTube. A lot of people have got YouTube. So. As little TV as we watch. <laughs> it's. Well, some people don't watch a lot of TV. We can't. I don't know. I'm bare, I, get, I leave at 7 and get home at 8.30, so it's. There's. I mean, I guess I've been watching a little bit of the MLB playoffs and a football game occasionally, but outside of that, it's hard to watch much TV. I got a good picture the other night of our five-star guy, Jesse Smithy, who I've told that he better call tonight because you are looking for him. You have a big question. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for him. I, you de Most definitely I'm looking. <laughs> I should have just drove up there the other night where they were at. Where were they? I did I can't remember if he said Fox, Toyota, or Harrison's. I really don't remember where they were at, but I should have went up well, there, though. Knowing him, uh, he got a free car or a free no, mail. No, no, they were at Harrison's because he's talking about the food. Got a free mail. And so he was talking about the food, and, uh, you know, uh, he needs to – I'd like to check his contract. I'm not sure that's – He uh, needs to uh, – he needs to uh, pony up. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, he needs to tell us what the ring looks like. He's – So. He, I got a feeling he's all in. Well, he's their video man. Video guy. Do you see that anything on the video board up there? It's five-star prep Jesse Smith. He's the one that done it. That's what they said the other night. We're going to get a confirmation about the ring. 
I, I just heard he's got rain. Might have had one on. Can't never tell. Well, let's see. So. I heard they went <laughs> wide out on the show. Went white? Yeah, wide out. Him and the guy he was working with that night, they matching out. Oh, yeah, they did. So they, we went great tonight. Yeah, we went great tonight. Yeah, neutral. they did. We're they were neutral tonight. But they did. Uh, they did. Uh, they did do the white thing. They were, they were together and everything. So, uh, yeah. Uh, did Mike call in last week? We ripped apart. Did Mike call in? No, Mike did not call in last week. We can't he believe didn't. it. We figured we'd hear from him. No, he didn't call in. So, let's see who's on here. Greg Caller, you're on the air. Hey, David, how are you and uh, your partner over there doing this evening? There we go. We're doing good, Mike. We was just talking about you, buddy. Oh, gosh. Was it good or bad? Well, a little both. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to tell you, though, I, uh, I watched on that ACTV. Uh, I was watching the Clinton game, and I, I Anderson County is playing Gibbs tonight. I swear I thought they said it was like 55 to nothing around halftime. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's correct. I heard a bunch of fireworks going off. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. And that's what they do when they score. They let them fireworks off. <laughs> They've unloaded the arsenal tonight. Well, no kidding. <laughs> no doubt there. Uh, Jonathan, did you, did you make it up to the weenie roast the other night? Absolutely. I made it. I had, uh, let's see, three of my four kids with me. We went up there, and uh, we had a good time. Uh, Coach, uh, Wright, yeah, I, uh, Coach Wright cooked out I went out up there and, and got them started there, and then uh, – Jody's daughter, I was trying to remember her name there, one's married to the guy that's got the record service. Lauren. Lauren, yeah. Lauren, yeah. She said, Dad there, he uh, said he made a big bowl of chili there, and he's proud of it there. He thinks he's another Bobby Flay, I believe. <laughs> I don't know how good it was. I didn't try none of it because I come on back home there. Was that pretty good stuff? Oh, it was great. We had a great time. We had some s'mores. We had some chilies, and uh, – or some chili and some hot dogs, hamburgers, all that fun stuff. And so it's always a good time up there. We get together as uh, all the coaches, the softball, baseball, football, basketball. We all get together and have oh, a yeah. family night up I there, and our kids have a big time. Rob there for a little while, and I asked him what he was into, and I guess now he's a assistant athletics director with Jody. <laughs> yeah, I think they kind of do that together, and uh, that's a pretty good duo right there. Oh, no doubt there. Good deal then. But uh, I just wanted to holler at you guys a minute there. I, I, I don't even want to ask what you said about me. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just let that go. But I just want to let you know there that uh, it was uh, Anderson County and Gibbs that was playing tonight. A lot of fireworks. I'm not sure what the score was, but I thought them guys on ACTV said it was like 55 to nothing around halftime. I think it wound up 55. It might be more than that, but it was 55-6 the last we heard. Or last I heard, anyway. Okay, and Gibbs had won like, uh, I think they'd won like six or seven in a row. They'd won a few in a row, yeah. Yeah, Mike, I'll tell you what you got to be careful with, and I was telling telling someone who called me tonight about this. Knoxville football is as bad as I've ever seen it. Absolutely as bad as I've ever seen it. <laughs> They're not good. It was the exception of the best team I've heard about has been Fisherton. Bearden, I would say, well, but West beat Bearden, and West West doesn't look that good. West didn't look that good. Hey, you've played sports a lot, cleaners coached a lot. I'm gonna ask you all this question: Have you ever heard of a team taking off a full week during the middle of a season, no matter what sport it is? What for fall break? For, well, no matter. I mean, let's not just say football for fall break. Have you ever heard of a team taking off a full week? I have. For what? On fall break, if you don't have a game, you. Why you plan it that way? Wow. Yeah. It's a long time to take off, in my opinion, but I don't know. We we live in a different time nowadays. <laughs> I don't know if AC practiced last week or not. I don't know. I, I wasn't referring to them. I've got a good buddy whose son, uh, he played college football at UT. His son plays for West. Last Thursday, I was in a meeting with him, and I said, what's going on, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, he said, well, we would have went to the beach for fall break, but we thought we'd practice football all week. He said, and we found out Sunday we weren't going to practice at all this week. Clinton didn't practice any last week. I mean, so just nothing. During the week of fall break. Just shut it down the whole week. Yep. Uh, yeah, they did. I think they did. They may have went back and maybe practiced a little bit on Sunday. 
or looked at some film or something, I think is what I heard. I don't know. Maybe uh, everybody. Uh, anyway, I, I think that's I about the, stand, that's about the there, thing get, now. Get your opinion on something there, Jonathan. You and David there. Uh, by eight and a half there. To, you, you're pretty comfortable with that. I, I, didn't, I, I couldn't hear you. I think he said Alabama's favored by eight and a half. I just wonder if you guys were are comfortable with that. <laughs> eight and a half favored by Alabama. Is that what you said, Mike? Yes. Uh, yeah, maybe. Might be more. It's only been 20 years since we won down there, so we're past due. Yeah, it's not happening tomorrow, though. <laughs> I'll give you a little interesting <laughs> stat there that I looked Is up it? today there. That, uh, Tennessee, in the last 37 games there, when they played a, a top 15 team on the road, would you guess what their record is? I'd say they've not won any of them. You're exactly right. Oh, for 37. <laughs> and that, that really kind of surprised me. Well, make it old for 38, then. They, if they run the football well tomorrow, they might be okay. That quarterback from Alabama is not any good. Well, the quarterback yeah, Tennessee's I don't think not Alabama is as good as they have been. <laughs> but, uh, let's see, maybe Tennessee's defense there. I, I don't have no confidence in this quarterback. We got it all over there right now. He just... Don't make good decisions there, but you never know. We'll see what happens there. Maybe some of the receivers will run down some of the balls there that if he gets it to them there, and we'll see what happens. We'll see, Mike. It's questionable, though. Go balls. 3.30 tomorrow. Go balls. All right. You guys have a good evening. See you, buddy. See you, buddy. Yeah, we'll talk a little college football later on, me and you will, but I, I, I don't know that. I don't know about Tennessee anymore. I'm. Either way. So you've so you've heard multiple schools take off full week this week. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Well now when you're when uh, Fulton basketball take right at Christmas time and New Year's, there's some downtime right there. I don't know if it's a week, but there's three or four days there where you're out of school <laughs> that you might not practice. There might be two days. Well, two or three days, that's that's pretty I good. Mean, we're talking about a whole week. I mean, you, 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 I don't, you, don't see Clint, you don't see them from Friday to Monday? I understand Clinton's program, uh, the, the facility was open for, for workouts and stuff, and it, but it was a voluntary thing. And I don't I, know how many I've came never, in or not. I've, I've never not, coached a team any. good enough I could take six days off and feel good about it. Well, they did. I'm just going. Yeah, I would think, and like I said, I, I'm not, I might be wrong on this. Somebody might have to call in and tell us, but I don't know the AC practice I don't last know. week neither. I don't know if they did or not. I'm just saying I've never coached a team. Go ahead, caller, you're on there. Six takes off. Um, yeah. Hey, cleaner. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hey. This is Ladybug. Yeah. First of all, I want to say that Comcast changed you all over to another channel, and it's disappointing because they didn't tell anybody. Okay. Well, I, once again, they didn't even tell us. Hey, Mr. Jones, well, can you, can I'm going to blast y'all on Facebook okay. and let them know where Friday night football is. Um, the second thing, and you know I'm a Lady Buck fan, Buccaneers, Hendersonville, but I got to give kudos to Harriman tonight. Blue Devils all the way. All right. What was the score? She hang up. List her TV. I don't think she hung up. Oh, did she? Yeah. Okay. What's Harriman scored tonight? I don't know. I'm not seeing it. Okay. Thirty two twenty one Harriman. Okay. Now, nah, folks, uh, we didn't uh, we didn't ask for the change. Hey, Comcast made that decision. That's not, that's out of our that's above my pay grade anyway. So uh, I didn't know anything about it till the morning that it happened around here. So it was news to everybody. So uh, you know. Like I said, if you're watching us on a device, 1080, 1081, or 1086, you can get Channel 12 right at the, on those channels on Comcast. If you have the basic plan, you can get that, and you can pick us up. So if you're, for some reason, if you've flipped over to a device to get us, go to UTV, and you can get us 1081 or 1086. So, uh, so West didn't practice neither. No, and like I said, I was with Robert Thursday, and... I mean, they like they said. I just don't know. Like I said, I'm too anal. Uh, 
I just I've never been around a team I'm comfortable enough that I could give six days off or seven days off and feel good about it well I mean uh, you got to think about it you, you you play Friday night so you didn't practice Friday you played Friday you take Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday so you're taking what nine days off and you come back on Monday uh, what do you think that you're going to get out of your team maybe during that week's practice if you're on fall break how much you get out of them? Whatever you demand out of them. Well, I guess you can, but you can demand it. But wonder what you think about attendance and stuff like that. I don't. Know. I would say just I let mean, them know at the start of the season. Hey, during fall break, we'll practice the first three days, and you'll get two days off. I mean, that's probably what. Maybe I mean, just happen, communicate. But, so, I mean, but I guess people, everybody's different. You know, is your team beat up? You know, do you have an experienced team? Do you have a young team? I don't know. I don't know what Clinton's reasoning was. I would just, if I was taking that educated guess, I'd think, you know, we've lost four games in a row. We need to get away for a while and just come back, regroup. And it, they regroup pretty good tonight. Who'd they so, beat? Carnes. Uh, Carnes got some good looking kids. They do have a couple good looking kids. They got some good looking kids. Uh, but uh, that's just how it rolls. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll take our first break of the night, and we'll be right back here in just a few minutes on the Free Miracle Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. Your boy's going to be here. Who's that? Get back on the air. Who'll be here? Your boy, Spithy. Oh, Jesse. The Free Medical Clinic of Oak Ridge presents New Year's Eve 2024 Countdown. On Sunday, December 31st, 2023 at 9 p.m. to January 1st, 2024 at 1 a.m. Live band, food truck, hot air balloons, sponsored by Tennessee College of Applied Technology, Baird, the City of Oak Ridge, David Coffee, BBB Communication, and Holloway Event Company. Ball drop and fireworks. Come with your friends and family to count down the new year together. Don't miss it. Free to the public. For more information, go to fmcor.org. At Ferris, we want you to get the most out of your time and end each day feeling good. That's why we pioneered exclusive lawnmower suspension technology, allowing for full speed mowing even over the roughest terrain. Grow your business by getting more done in less time with Ferris. Ferris, work hard, feel good. Found exclusively at independent Ferris dealers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians, or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment.
Onsite Care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. Onsite Care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, Onsite Care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now Onsite Care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at Onsite Care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at roanstate.edu now, and let's succeed together. Kathy May Martin has been making real estate dreams a reality for over three decades. Buying or selling real estate is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Choosing the right realtor is next. Thinking of buying or selling? Call Kathy May Martin at Coldwell Banker Jim Henry & Associates for all your real estate needs. Rest assured, with Kathy's knowledge and experience, you will be on the winning team. Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Football is back, and OEB Law is excited for a season full of big hits, perfect plays, and those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacle blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865-546-1111, and turn your wreck into a chicken. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Welcome back to the Free Buck Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard, and uh, we've got week 10 the inks drying in the books right now for me and Cox, and uh, you know, we'll end this thing up next week, except for the playoffs, but uh, we'll end it up, Cox. Uh, you know, I, I know we've discussed football up one side and down the other this year, but you know, uh, if you take just a handful of teams, you're pretty much right about football. Football's down a little bit in the area yeah. this year. I mean, all the way from whether it's one A to six A football, not the. I mean, it's yeah. it's been really good in the past year. Or so yeah, I guess every, well, I, I guess everybody's due some downtime. But uh, so if we were predicting right now, you see any you see anybody that's looking right for the upset in the playoffs? Maybe you think Whew. it doesn't Greenville Elizabeth and play next week? Is that next week? Yeah. So that'll tell us a lot about that. I think they're both still undefeated, best of my knowledge. So some, man, what a way to end the year, have to play a game like that and then turn right around and get in the playoffs. But, I don't know that I wouldn't want that game earlier in the year. Well, I think history tells those two teams 
and I think last couple years has been week nine. Um, but I think history tells those two teams. I'm just going to kind of copycat what Coach said the other day when I talked to him. It really lets him know where he needs to be and what he needs to work on for the next couple of weeks getting into, the, you know, what he calls big boy football. Because you think about it, you play that game, you practice for a week, and whatever you're practicing on, you're practicing to get better from your flaws that you watched the week before. That's true. And, and, that, and that, that first round playoff game historically has been a major blowout for whatever team that went to Elizabeth and or Greenville. I went and watched it last year. 50 plus point game. You know, you just you go back and look, it's been blowout. And then all of a sudden the week the second round, if you're the second place team, you're coming to AC and you're gonna be in a dog fight. And I think that gets you ready for that dog fight. You know, I think if you ask them, that's kind of. But you're right. You, yeah, that's a that's a physical football game. If you were having to play a big time football game that next week in the playoffs, where there's only two teams in the playoffs, you know, you didn't have. I, I've always said round one is just a meaningless round. It's just, you know, hey, we made the playoffs. Great year. Yeah. See you next year. See you next year. Yeah. Well, you know, you, know what? You, you go back and look at Clinton, and you look at Clinton's schedule this year with Powell oh. and, and, you know, Oak Ridge and Anderson County, that gauntlet that they tried to run there. And uh, I, I know it was great for the Gates and everything, have back-to-back -back home games like that, but, wow, that's just murderous row right there. Ooh. I mean, it's hard to get up, especially two of those games being big rivalry games like they are. It's just hard to get up, and especially one of those games that hadn't been played in the last – couple of years two or three years you put it back on the schedule and uh you know it's just it was just tough but clinton did get off the snide and not win one yeah. so we'll see what to do next weekend's heritage so they got heritage next week and and maybe sleepy will call and tell us here in a minute or jesse can call and tell us but who does it look like clinton will be playing i don't even know where they go i don't know if they go Utawal, ray county i think that's bradley uh, not bradley center but bradley uh Mc, is it mcmink i can't, i don't know they go oh. that way, I think. So they won't play a pal or – Won't play a pal or anybody west. to the third – They won't play a pal or a west or one of those teams? No. You think they're region two and they're going up to region one? You think Clinton's region three heading more toward Chattanooga area to play region four? Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. No, Historically, that's been correct. Historically, yes. I don't know if that's changed or not. Udawa, so, Red Bank. Udawa, those teams. Ray County. And, and those teams down there, yes. Yeah. They they head that way, and they play down there. So, But now, that could have all changed this year with TWSAA. A lot's changed. A lot's changed. So, uh, you know, I, I think last year, last week with high school football was just a debacle. I mean, it was total just a disaster. total – Just a total disaster. I mean, I told Brad uh, – there was really, and this is the honest truth when I say this, there was, I don't, I don't know how we did the show as long as we done it last week, but there was really no use even having a show last week because there really wasn't anybody to talk about. When everybody's out of town and everybody, nobody's, I mean, they had practice. They, it, yeah, no <laughs> pra well, nobody's here. Yeah. You're right. Most, most, most people went off on fall break and they got out of here and uh, they went on. So, uh, but anyway, something to look at next year maybe, but, uh, it's a. Uh, it's been an interesting year. It's been a crazy year, and uh, I did get a call today from a guy, and he wanted. And I meant to say this right off the top of bat. I'll wait and say it now. It's been a little later, so I'll say it now. There's a rumor flying around about Coach Keith. That Coach Keith is leaving Clinton, and he's taking the Austin East job. That's a rumor. That's a false rumor. Coach Keith put that rumor to bed today with uh, with my buddy. He told him you. Get that stop because that's not true. That's false. I, I don't, I'm not going to Austin East. I don't think Austin East job's open. That's what I said, too. <laughs> but somebody had started that rumor saying that he, he was going to Austin East. Coach Keith is not leaving Clinton to go to Austin East. Come up at least with a spot that's got an open coaching yeah. vacancy. Yeah, I don't even think, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if that guy's in trouble over there or not. I, know he, I don't think he'd won a game until tonight. Maybe he is in trouble, but, you know, I don't know. Quick call, are you on the air? Did Anderson County win? Yes. Big. Big. 55 to 6. 55 to 6. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. All right. Might be the first time that guy's called in that D didn't tell us the score. He sounded sick a little Was bit. Was that him? That's, that sounded like him to me, anyway. Sounded like huh. a young man that calls in. I know. I don't know if it's him or not. 
but it sounded like him. But I'd AC's like to what? know where Clinton could possibly go. Clinton's a team to me, and of course somebody's going to call in and disagree. Clinton's a team to me where if Keith gets hot and gets rolling, you don't want to play him in an elimination game. That's a one-game shootout, man. You could have a one-game shootout. You don't know what's going to happen. If they play like they played tonight, I mean, you know, they played pretty good football tonight. I know it was against cards, and there's no use getting too hyped up about it. But still, yet they, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe they get, you know, maybe they do get rolling at the right time. I'm not saying four weeks from now we're playing in some semifinals or finals somewhere, but, you know, they got as good as Clinton's. If, if, if they Clinton's can stop offense, the run. If Clinton's offense is clicking, it's as good as any offense around here. I agree. That's just it. If it's clicking. On, on how electric it can how be. How electric it can be. Because yeah. they can be down seven, and 15 seconds later, they can be tied with you. Yeah. Or it can be tied, and 15 seconds later, they can be up by seven. Yeah. If they're clicking, and they've got to be clicking on all cylinders. And tonight, once again, yeah. you know, team they hadn't beaten the last couple of years, Carnes. Carnes has been the one that's knocked them out of the playoffs the last couple of years. This has been a playoff game in the last couple of years. Absolutely. So uh, Clinton's not been able to beat them, so they do beat them tonight. But uh, but I do think if they if they can stop the run and Keith gets hot, they're they're they're, they're not an easy out. No, it's not an easy they're out. They're not an for easy them. out. No, huh? Huh? Because when he gets the ball in his hands, there's so many good things that can happen, and uh, it just changes things. I'll let you take that call. Great call, are you on the air? Hey guys, it's Jesse Smitty. How are y'all tonight? Hey, Mr. AC. <laughs> How are y'all? <laughs> huh? How you doing, Jesse? I'm doing well. How about y'all? I watched you on TV Wednesday night a little while. He's got a face for radio. Yeah, we. <laughs> you, you know, I, I like the I like the white out. You know, y'all matched and. Man. Yeah, we look like a boy band up there, doing a little in sync. I don't know about that, or I don't know about that part of it, but man, you you you, you gonna get you a high top fade? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you tell us what the ring looks like? Cause I understood. If I'm, my understanding is you got one. I did not get a ring. No. I, oh, I don't uh, know about that. <laughs> oh, you can come. You can come check my room, but no, I didn't. I didn't get a ring. Um, but. Yeah, they've been inviting me up this season, and finally had a chance to go up there and talk a little AC on the on the coaches show. Yeah, I saw you the other night up there, and I had to call Cox as soon as I seen that. So you ain't gonna believe it. Jesse's oh, I, on the coaches show. Believe me, I heard about it. I heard about it. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, was you was you surprised tonight? Because I don't think we were. Were you surprised tonight by Maryville Alcoa? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, given that Maryville's playing a freshman quarterback. Uh, I was surprised that Alcoa turned the ball over five times. Uh, their quarterback, the kid who transferred in, threw three interceptions tonight. Uh, they put the ball on the ground a couple times via fumble. Uh, they they had a chance for a game-winning drive, and Eli Owens, who's a power five prospect, recruited by everybody, there was a little bit of a controversial call on his fumble, but nevertheless, Maryville took advantage of it. And their freshman quarterback, Will Jones, had a deep run into – Alcoa territory, then they managed the clock right, got themselves in position for a 27-yard field goal and knocked it home. So that's a team that's seen all kinds of adversity this year. Uh, they're down, you know, Will Jones wasn't really even in the conversation when you started talking about who was going to be their starting quarterback this year. But injuries upon injuries upon injuries have thrusted many underclassmen into the spotlight for Maryville. And here they are, I mean, winning big games late in the season, just like Maryville does. So this team was kind of, I'm not going to say they were left for dead, but there was blood in the water around Maryville. In the last two weeks, they've put together two huge wins. Isn't it amazing how winning programs and winning cultures just kind of find a way to gut it out and <laughs> win some they shouldn't win? Yeah, it's, uh, it's what keeps them going. It's what produces consistency. Uh, in championship programs like that. Just culture, expectation to win, pressure. Uh, it, it creates kids who can thrive in that environment when the spotlights are the brightest. And look, Maryville didn't play clean tonight. They, you know, Will Jones, the quarterback, he threw a few interceptions. Uh, Alcoa baited him into some looks and, and picked off a few passes in the end zone. So he made his mistakes. Uh, but he never really you know, never really shot away from the spotlight, never really panicked and just kind of stayed 
level-headed. That's what Derek Hunt told us about him in a pre-game interview this week, and he plays exactly like Derek Hunt said he would. Yeah, that's, that, that was that was a good win for Maryville and a good win for Coach. I know they're bit on him a little bit over there. It's amazing, but they're all we got to win football. We're not where we were, you know, and all that stuff. So, yeah. Well, I used to listen to them criticize George Coral's uh, people up in the stands, and I just <laughs> never thought I'd hear the day where people were criticizing George Coral's. I mean, you got a win percentage of ninety three percent, ninety four percent, and people up in the stands are calling saying he's too predictable and this, that, and the other. And so it's just. That's just fans being fans, man, no matter who's the coach. Absolutely. Hey, talk. take us through some of the week here. It's been an exciting football week. What What else did, What else happened tonight that caught you off guard? I mean, the big game down here was Oliver Springs, Cold Field. Might want to talk about that a little bit and then talk about other games you all covered in the area. Yeah. I, you know, here I was sitting there thinking that you know, did, Cold Field didn't wrap up a region championship tonight, right? I mean, don't they have to beat Rockwood next week? Is that right? Like Rockwood's quietly kind of gone about his business and is four and one, I think. In you might play. be right, Jesse. I think you're exactly right. Yeah, and that's games on Thursday I, this coming week. Yeah, and I was going into this week thinking that it was Coldfield Oliver Springs for region championship. And it very well may, may be, uh, and I try to catch as much of that game um, on Facebook as I could. And uh, I know both teams suffered for some turnovers there, but. Coldfield got that late touchdown and then got the ball back, was able to run the clock out. I think that's their sixth consecutive win over Oliver Springs. But and Oliver Springs has some dudes out there that I really liked. And uh, I think they could be around in the playoffs for a little bit. But nevertheless, it's just a continued uh, owning of that series here in recent years by Coldfield. And um, looks like they'll have a leg up to be a number one seed. And um, they'll have to knock off a Rockwood team, which – I was told midway through the year was really young, probably won't really reach its potential until next year. And lo and behold, John Webb just has done an unbelievable coaching job, as he always does at Rockwood, in getting his team competitive each and every year. Absolutely. So if you started looking at playoffs or how that shapes up, we, we were talking earlier, does, does Clinton go towards Chattanooga this year, still in that 5A Clinton Oak Ridge, they heading toward Chattanooga, or do you know the answer to that? Yeah, I mean, I hadn't really, I hadn't really taken a too far of a look at, at brackets per se. More so, just looking at at games this week and next week that could that could uh, really dictate region champions teams getting into the playoffs. But yeah, I mean, if if Clinton's kind of in that three seed, I think they'd have to go against uh, East Hamilton or somebody like that, or Walker Valley, um, one of those programs down in the Chattanooga area for sure. Gotcha. And then so the big games next week, Elizabeth and Greenville, what, Farragut, Maryville? What, what else is What else is it? Bradley Central, Bearden? Yeah, Bradley Central, Bearden, Thursday. that game I think is on a Thursday night. Up, and that's, you know, both teams are undefeated in region play. They're both going to host first-round playoff games come November 3rd. But Bearden's trying to win its first region championship since 2007. That was the year they made it all the way to the state semifinals and lost heartbreaking fashion at Smyrna. Um so it's been a long time since Beard's put, been put in this position. After that, I think Greenville, Elizabethan is probably up there uh, in terms of most important games. That'll be for a region championship. And then you got Powell and West. Uh, West won again tonight. Offense still does, doesn't look right. It doesn't look it doesn't look like it has a rhythm or a, a real decif- decisiveness to it. Uh, but they're winning with that defense and, and getting touchdowns and field goals when they can. Powell looks really, really good right now, guys. I mean, I watched a little bit of their game tonight, and this is going to be a really good game next week in week week 11. I don't know who I'm picking yet. Powell's offense definitely looks better than West at this point, uh, but that West defense is, is legit and top tier, and so it'll be one of the top games next week for sure. Powell's quarterback, he's continuing to get better, isn't he? He has, yeah. I mean, we watched him – in spring practice, we watched him in seven on seven. We watched him in preseason scrimmages and the early weeks of the season, and you could see in that time just incremental improvement, just a little. And there were you know other guys that Powell was working at quarterback, so he didn't really know if Deuce Rogers was going to be the guy. But as the season wore on, and, and especially when Connor Wheeler got hurt just for a little bit, Powell star running back. That's when you saw Deuce Rogers say, "Okay, I'm going to lead this team." I'm going to make plays with my legs as well as with my arm. And so when Connor Wheeler came back, 
it just looked like a stronger offensive unit out there. So he had some huge runs tonight. Deuce Rogers did. Uh, one on a touchdown run, I think 27 yards. I think he had a 51-yard run earlier in the game that set up a short yardage touchdown run for a teammate. Uh, so it, it, Powell and West has always given us high drama in the last, what, two to three years, and I think we're in for it next week again. Yeah, absolutely. That's There's certain matchups that's every yep. year at the you end of the season on. you're, you're waiting, waiting on. on yeah. And yep. uh, that's been one of them. I watched West play uh, the last two weeks ago. And I know, too, Jesse, the, the running back you asked me to watch, you know, turf toe and one foot and ankle on the other, and he had a hard time cutting. But, I mean, he was still explosive and powerful. But their offense just looked at, had, like it had no rhythm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Anderson County was single high safety all night, and they never threw the ball across the middle one time. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It just didn't look like it was a state championship offense. But uh, – Obviously, both those defenses that night uh, stood out. Yeah, it's. I, mean, I tried to watch West when I could tonight, um, and I saw Devin Jameson back, number seven, who was kind of like their – Yeah. Yeah, Marshawn Bowers, who's kind of 1A running back, Devin Jameson's 1B. So he was back tonight and running it looked like at full strength. But Marshawn Bowers wasn't out there that much running the football. I saw him at times in the game, so maybe they're just kind of holding him out precaution-wise uh, to – to that game against Powell, um, yeah, they're, they're just still not full strength yet offensively, and who knows if that happens. You guys know all about high ankle and, or ankle sprains and turf toe and all that stuff. I mean, it, it just doesn't go away. No, nope, you're does. just trying to you're trying to play through that pain as much as you can. And uh, West needs him at a, at near 100 percent bad. I just don't know if he's going to get there. Yeah, I was told even after that game that a lot of people there. At West couldn't believe he even played the Anderson County game. They thought the plan all along was it's just to hold him out to the Powell game and let him play the end. Um, but you know it's tough. You're wanting to win. You're wanting to play your best players. But man, you yeah. There's more important games ahead in November. Down the road. Yep, sure is. Yep. So, so yeah, I mean, one last thing. Uh, Webb lost on the road tonight, 14 to 10, down at Gary Rankin's Boyd Buchanan team. That was for a region championship. So Boyd Buchanan undefeated. They were without their best player, their top running back, and they still were able to win that game against Webb. Um, I think we see these teams make deep runs in the Division Two AA playoffs. I don't know which team from east side of the state really gets to Chattanooga and probably faces CPA, but um, I, I still think both of those teams have good chances. But it was uh, the first loss of the year for Webb tonight and new head coach Don Mahoney. Uh, Jesse, real quick, Gary Rankin, we talked about his coaching career just briefly early and how we were surprised with that game. I thought Webb would probably win that game because we heard there were some injuries involved. Did mm-hmm. Gary Rankin did not start at Riverdale, right? That wasn't his first head coaching job. No, his, I believe his first head coaching job was at Smith County, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, and um, and took on some just terrible teams, 0-10, 1-9 seasons. And uh, as he started to build that program into relevance, that's when I think he got snatched up by Riverdale. Of course, went on to win championships there and, um, and came to Alcoa for the 2006 season. Gotcha. Well, there you go. We we knew you would know. We had no clue. Yep. <laughs> so, good deal. Well, hey, thanks, man. I know you got a lot of work ahead of you. Great job not keeping us updated. I, I was trying to watch games and follow you on Twitter. And the young man you had working Maryville tonight, he did a great job keeping us updated on that. Um, Absolutely, yeah. He, I just posted a couple of videos that he did with uh, some Maryville running backs on Twitter. So, if you're a Maryville fan out there, you want to check those out, hop on the Twitter, and you'll be able to find them. All right, Jesse, we appreciate it. We'll see you next week, babe. All right, guys, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, see you, man. See you, babe. All right, let's jump out and take a break on the – Oh, we got our caller on the line. Okay, I'll hold on. They told us, they're telling me to hold on, not to go to break. So we'll hold on, not go to break. It's amazing how much now he knows about high school football or sports he's in general. A, he's just a wealth of knowledge, man. That's what I, I, I – Okay. Let's go ahead and take a break. We'll be right back here in just a few minutes on the free medical client Friday night school board. Football is back. And OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits. 
and those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your wreck into a check. The Free Medical Clinic of Oak Ridge presents New Year's Eve 2024 Countdown on Sunday, December 31st, 2023 at 9 p.m. to January 1st, 2024 at 1 a.m. Live band, food trucks, hot air balloons, sponsored by Tennessee College of Applied Technology, Baird, the City of Oak Ridge, David Coffey, BBB Communication, and Holloway Event Company. Ball drop and fireworks. Come with your friends and family to count down the new year together. Don't miss it. Free to the public. For more information, go to fmcor.org. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians, or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health for every moment. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at roanstate.edu now and let's succeed together. has been making real estate dreams a reality for over three decades. Buying or selling real estate is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Choosing the right realtor is next. Thinking of buying or selling? Call Kathy May Martin at Coldwell Banker Jim Henry & Associates for all your real estate needs. Rest assured, with Kathy's knowledge and experience, you will be on the winning team. Make this spring all about enjoying the experience. When you ride on your new Ferris commercial mower, featuring patented suspension technology, you'll have more than freshly manicured grass. You'll experience productivity and comfort like never before. And because you won't be slowing down for those rough spots, you'll mow more lawn in less time. Ferris, experience suspension. SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. 
Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammer. season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your wreck into a chicken. Welcome back to the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. And like I said earlier, week 10 is in the books. The ink's dry on it. And all we're doing now is just talking about it and breaking it down. We will talk to Tennessee football here in just a little bit. Uh, I don't even know who they play tomorrow. Who do they play tomorrow? Roll oh, Tide. Roll Tide, Alabama. Would you tell me a while ago, 20 years since Tennessee's won down there? I think 2003 was the last time they won down there. I was giving my buddy a hard time the other day, yesterday. He called me about basketball. And I said, you know, you could have changed the history of that Tennessee-Alabama game if you wouldn't have fumbled going to the end zone. He said, I could have held on that football if I had to. Talking about Corey Anderson. Uh -huh. Remember when the helmet hit the ball going to the end zone? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he said he got back and he said, I didn't realize people even, you know, knew who I was until they, <laughs> I'd be walking to campus and somebody would say something to me. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, sometimes people don't forget stuff around here anyway, they don't anyway. Yeah. So, He's uh, like, how do these jokers know who I am? <laughs> yeah, they know who I am. But yeah. uh, like I said, Oak Ridge wins tonight, Clinton wins tonight, Anderson County wins tonight, Oliver Springs loses tonight, Rockwood wins tonight, Harriman wins tonight. And I have not seen Kingston. Off. Okay, they're off tonight, so they didn't play tonight. Uh, Maryville, I don't know that it's an upset that Maryville beat Alcoa tonight. Say it any way you want to say it, but uh, Maryville beats Alcoa tonight by three. Uh, Were you surprised the Oak Ridge score as close as it was for the first half? Yeah. Yeah. I well, I'll tell you why I'm surprised, and I don't know. I don't know if the and don't ask me the kid's name. I cannot. I was told his name, and I do not remember it. A North City's best player yeah. got hurt against Jesse Clinton. Jesse told us yeah, that. That's right. I can't remember who it was. Got hurt in the first half against Clinton, and he didn't play the next week at Heritage. I don't know if the young man came back tonight or not to play. I was shocked that the score was as, as close as it was. Period. So if that young man didn't play, and he might have played, and he w w played hurt, so uh, but they held him out last week. Uh, I'm not shocked with Beard. Beard. It just seems to me. I tell you something. I am shocked. I didn't know till tonight that Farragut won tonight, beat Hardin Valley, but they broke a six-game losing streak tonight. Yep. And if they lose next week against Maryville, I think they miss the playoffs. So by Maryville winning the week before. They, they're in the playoffs. They're in the playoffs, right? Next week's game, their game next week against Farragut, from my understanding, is a seeding game where if Maryville wins, they will be the three seed. If Maryville loses, they will be the four seed. And Cleveland, and then there's like a three-way tie. I don't know how that works. How would you like to know you use the one seed out of a region and your first game was going to be the four seed from another region, and it just happened to be Maryville. Yeah. Whoa. Now, that, that, that's a bracket, right? They do a 32 bracket. Is that how that's the top 32? Brad, is that right for the region for 6, 6A? They do a 32-team bracket. Everybody in 6A makes the playoffs, all 32 teams. Is there all 32 teams? Well, what's fair? 5A or 6A? They're 6A now. I think they're all even now. Oh, they well, are. How, if so it, they went away from the big. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. It's not anymore. I can't I don't keep think. up with. It. I just know one thing. I can stand behind, and I love a guy that's on it. But that 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 Teal display is absolutely screwed up. High school football. I agree we, don't, with you. we don't need nine classifications. I we don't agree. Need with you. Six is too many. I mean, six is too many. It needs four I, to five at max and two in the privates, and let's go. The way these privates are coming on with schools, man, there are going to be as many private schools for as long as there is public schools. Yeah, but the, none of the It's all that way, None though, of the I privates mean. want to play. I mean, you know, you got that big group of privates and everybody, you know, I don't know. It's just. Well, that big group's like a small college. They so, are. I mean, they are. Terrible. But you know what? If you got 500 kids and they've got 700 kids, hey, go go play them. Just go recruit harder. Spend more money. You're, they're paying it. That's basically what they're doing. So, I mean, to know, get the kids. So why uh, shouldn't we be in Catholic's division in football? As many kids as they have versus playing, you know, Grace, who's got 60 percent less people. I mean, Webb's got money. Go spend it. If they want to play, you know, if they want to have 550 kids in their school, go play big boy football, get some better players. They've uh, they've got the money too. They can afford yeah. to do what they need to do. I mean, that's a nice facility over there. Got Rather a good than facility over there. Lakeway, who's got 240 kids. Yeah, but Lakeway's got a nice facility too. <laughs> yeah, but they've only got 240 God, kids. Mighty, what a facility! They got 110 boys. I mean, you know what I mean? They got half of what Webb has. Well, still, yeah. They got yeah. a nice facility, they do have man. Great facility. They it's got awesome. a nice facility. But you're up right. There. The private schools are growing, but it's just, it's way too many. Six is way too And And, I mean, football. Too my, small of a state for that. If you look, if you just look at football in general, and we're t I was going to ask you about this anyway, and I'll ask here as I'm talking here. If you look at football in general from the pro game all the way down, all the way down through middle school, all the way down through the Optimus Club. Football's really changed from top to bottom and all that. But a sport that's really coming on, and there's some talk there's going to be some NFL players possibly play on an Olympic team that's going to play flag football. <laughs> there's a possibility that there's some players that's going to participate in, a fly, in flag football for the United States on, in a flag football, on a flag football team. I, I mean... It wouldn't surprise me. Um, these pro athletes, I think they do so much. They get paid so much. They train so hard. And, you know, you've got them to the point now where they're ready. It's like the dream team, right? You, you, those guys want to go win a gold medal. And then that's become something that all those NBA guys want to do. Then you got professional golfers. They want to win a gold medal. Then you've got baseball. Bryce Harper comes out a couple weeks ago. I want to know why we can't play in the Olympic Games. I want to be a part of the USA's baseball team in the Olympics. That, that I'm trying to think, in the Olympics, so right in the middle of base, uh, right in baseball? I don't think they care. I don't think these baseball players that are wanting to win a gold medal they and represent their style, I don't think they care. And they're wanting the Dominicans. They want all these, you know, Countries to be represented by the best players in the. Well, yeah, if we're going to do the, the best, country. let's do the best because I've already seen where the, like Team USA this year didn't do very well and whatever they were playing in. Yeah. But I've already seen where you got there's already guys that are committing to play USA basketball. It's not going to be the same team. It's not going to be nowhere near the same team yeah. as what was on the floor this past summer that competed for the USA. I mean, you're talking some heavyweights here yeah. that's going to play. Uh, in that game, and there, there's going to be so yeah, NFL players if they want to win a gold medal. So flag football is the fastest growing sport right now around. Flag yeah. football is, and I think we addressed this on this show, and it's the absolute worst thing for youth football. Flag football is absolutely. Well, that's going to be my question. Do you think flag football will eventually kill football? On the middle school, on the Optimus Club level, the middle school level, and maybe even possibly the high school level. For the schools and communities that are allowing it to be played in the fall, it is hurting the numbers for kids who should be playing fly or foot tackle. You got seven, eight, seven year olds, one thing, nine and 10 year old flag football in the fall. I mean, put a helmet on. <laughs> 
I think it's going because of contact and all the injuries and the possibility of it. Now, listen, you can get injured in flag football, too. Don't get me wrong. You can. You can but you can tear your ACL playing flag football this way. You can tear your ACL playing tackle football. Or you probably can get a concussion in flag football just like you can get a concussion playing tackle football. But they say it's the fastest growing sport around right now is flag football yeah. because I, everybody can play it. Yeah. I think it's an awesome idea for the spring, for those kids who don't play baseball. They want to play flag football. That way they have something to do. But – I think in the fall it just needs to be, it needs to be tackled. I don't know. If there, is there too many? Is there some fall leagues around here for flag football? Oh gosh, everywhere. Oh, I didn't know that. KY, KYS is a group. Knoxville U Sports. Uh, they play Catholic area. John Tarleton, and then you've got, uh, I mean, Grace U Sports. I think they had over 200 kids in Grace U Sports this past year. Seven, eight, nine-year-olds playing flag football. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's 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 people everywhere playing flag football. But it should be a spring sport that way it doesn't take away from the numbers. Like Kingston, from my understanding, has a flag football league right now, seven, eight-year-olds and nine and ten-year-olds. And from my understanding, they have more kids in those th those two age groups than they do in their tackle program. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it in the least. Yeah. I don't doubt and, it in the least. And, you know. And I don't know. I don't know what age is too young or too old. I don't. I don't know that. I mean, you can say, well, you know, they start getting head injuries. You know, blah blah. blah. Well, I've not seen many eight-year-olds or nine-year-olds even get hit hard enough to. They get hit harder at home, probably. <laughs> so I don't know, but I think it's hurting the game of tackle football in the fall. But I do think there's a time for it. I think the time for it will be spring. Uh, I do not like at all this seven-on-seven seven junk that's going on that's taking kids away from playing basketball and baseball i think that's a joke a lot of, a lot of teams a revert to the seven on seven stuff man yeah. but i've got a good but i've got a lot of i got a lot of good friends that watch that, that i got a lot of good friends that coach college football and recruit and one of the old heads the other day, I, or back in September, I was with him over at Furman, and he said, why would I go to 7-on-7 seven seven to recruit a kid? We don't play 7-on-7. Seven seven. We play tackle. But wouldn't you just go maybe, and I, I'm only thinking I'm not a recruiter or trying to recruit anybody, but wouldn't that be a way to get a look at somebody to see what, how they, you know, how they react and how they – how they do things, if they run routes right, how DB, you know, if you're a good route runner and a good DB, you're gonna, it don't matter what you're playing, you're going to be at, I mean, that's just what my thinking would be, a way to see, another way to be able to see a kid, because if he's playing tackle, you might not be able to get there. You might be able to see him on film and not really see what type of kid he is. He might be a kid that's on the field playing seven on seven as a kid you don't want on your team because he could be trouble the whole time he's out there. That might not yeah. show up on film because you can cut and paste you on film, you know. Yeah, and I mean, I, I mean, I just a thought. I think at a high level, but I think there's so many of these lower tier uh, and middle tier things are just a waste of time, I, and they're you, taking away. You know, from you sports. hear all the time about we we won the seven on seven passing league. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what that? What's that done for you? Yeah. I mean, what it do for you? Yeah. It's not going to get you in the playoffs. It's not going to guarantee you any games. There wasn't no pads on. There wasn't no tackling on. You know, uh, what did that really get you? Yeah. You know, maybe it built your confidence up a little bit. Maybe it got your confidence that you yeah. could work on some things. Maybe if you got a young, may, I, where I see the seven on seven really help. If you got younger, if I had a young, if I if I had a team that had some a veteran quarterback and some veteran receivers, and then I had some young receivers coming up and a young quarterback, yeah. I take those young receivers and that young quarterback, yeah. and I take them to the seven on seven. I just don't like That's the me. fact. There's two things that I'll add to this before we move on. Number one, you know, a wide receiver that's scared to get hit is going to look a lot better on seven on seven. A quarterback that's scared to get hit is going to look a lot better seven on seven. True, true, most times true. You say what you want to. True. Oh no, it's true. I agree with you. I've watched football players this year, and you can tell the ones that don't like getting hit. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go to the flip side of that when it starts taking away from their high school experience of playing basketball and baseball and they really 
somebody's really made them believe, man, if you want a D1 scholarship, you've got to go do this. That's sad. I don't think that coach I'll be allowed to coach. Because if you're D1, they'll find you. Yeah, I just don't think if that. If you're D2, they'll find you. If there's a coach out here like that, I don't think that coach I'll be allowed to coach, man. But you know that's what's happening across the United States right Oh, now. I, yeah, I, I do know yeah. that. I do realize that. I think if a kid wants to play, if he wants to play baseball, he wants to play basketball, he wants to run track, he wants to wrestle, whatever. He wants to participate in the chess club, he ought to be allowed to participate in and I, you know, that ought to be more than. And there's some kids that's only going to play one sport. I understand that. But you ought to be able to allow to you ought to be allowed to play all the sports without punishment, without punishment. And any coach that punishes their kids over that, they ought to not be coached. And I got a good that's a kid that's a coach I wouldn't want my son to play for. And here's you some good information. It's against NCAA rules for a coach to attend seven on seven. Oh, it is okay. Takes it out, then you can't attend. But yet you got to do it. Well, how do you do it and get away with it? <laughs> I mean, that's you know that's what they're saying. No, that's what they're saying. You got to play it. If you want to be seen, get noticed. You got to play it. Okay, if a college coach can't <laughs> if a college coach can't come, I mean, there you go. Be That's like Jim Harbaugh. He's figured out a way to scout teams, and it's been it's illegal to scout a your next opponent, and they've been stealing signals apparently, and he's got caught. How he got caught, I don't know, but uh, he did get caught. Yeah, well, that's what they said. Him, I don't know if he did or not. So absolutely, could care less. Really, just to be honest with you. Oh, we got a call here. Let's see who it is. We got a caller here on the air. Hey guys, hey, I got a quick question. You guys talking about that seven on seven stuff? So my kid is like six years old, okay. And do you think, as a as a fundamental standpoint, would would it be good to introduce him to a seven on seven or just keep him in tackle? <laughs> is he already playing tackle? Yeah, he's already playing tackle. Does he like it? <laughs> I, I I didn't I didn't see him have a problem with him. He never complained about the hits. He always got right back up. I leave him there. Then I've got a seven year old that's been. I got a nine. Got a nine year old that's been playing since he was six. I've got a six year old that's played. Um, they love it. They go play tack. They go play flag football. They're bored. They want to know why they can't hit somebody. It is, it is the way it my, is. I mean, now fundamentally for football, I think it's totally different than baseball or basketball than golf. I think you can pick up football in sixth or seventh grade and probably learn that sport a lot quicker than you could something like a golf or a baseball where it's a lot more skillful. Um, right. So it's according to what it is. But it's like, you know, I tell my kids, if you want to be a good basketball player when you're young, show me the best two dribblers on the team, I'll show you the best two players. Uh, right. So it's, you know, it's – it's a fine line there, but if your dad that doesn't think your kid needs to play football till he's in fifth grade, I I would I wouldn't tell him he's wrong. Uh, my father wasn't allowed to play football too since seventh grade, and he, you know, was a good high school football player and played in college for a couple of years. So I'll make this example: Coach Apple's son was not allowed to play tackle football to his seventh grade year, but he played flag all the way throughout. Now is that just because it's it's. it's the, on the tackling portion of it, it's kind of like you can kind of like teach that later because the will to want to hit is is in a more mature person then. Yeah, I think so. But I can tell you, like watching my youngest, my middle, my middle boy now, you know, they played nine and ten year old football this year. The kids that play when they were seven, eight, when they started the season, was ahead of the other kids. But those other kids that were athletic and kind of aggressive, they kind of catch up to those other, you know. To the kids that have been playing, I think it's a. I think you can learn it, and a little quicker than you can other sports. Uh, so I don't think there's one way to do it or one way not to do it in football. But I think with like a baseball and you know and, and the skillful stuff, the basketball, the the, the golf, the, the I think it, the, when you got to learn a, a skill, it takes longer than it is to you know run full speed and try to wrap somebody up. It's just a little different. Just a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I know because like when I come up in school, like. On the off season, I wrestled. You know what I mean? And that's what you did. You played another sport on the off season to get your keep you in shape for the football season coming up. But you're talking early '90s, mid '90s. Yeah, yep. And that's the way it should be. I mean, you should be playing other sports and doing other things. I think that's my biggest complaint with seven on seven or AAU basketball or whatever it might be. Like, 
club, whatever club volleyball, what, no matter what sport you're playing, it should not take away from you playing another high school sport and enjoying high school and playing sports with your friends. You only get to go there, you know, you only get four years. Um, so, Great. yeah. Play all the sports you can play, man. That's how I look at it. I hear I got him in wrestling now, so that wrestling season coming up now. That's, that'll help him with his form tackling. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. Keep him going, man. Hands. I will. Hey, you guys have a wonderful night and I enjoy the show. Nah, thank, thank you, man. You. Appreciate it. Yep. And it makes you know it makes a lot of sense. You don't know, you know, some parents will say my kid's not playing tackle till he's bam. Yeah. Some kids are not playing. But to go back to you, if you're a, if you're an athlete, you can play all those sports, and you're usually pretty good in all of them. Yeah. Usually, come, you know, the cream rises to the top. Yeah, it's just, I think it's just so overboard with some of these parents. I mean, like, dude, you're no, your here's, kid's 13 you years old. You know what old. the problem is? We give all these kids trophies. Yeah, yeah, we rings. We give all now, these kids ridiculous. rings and participation Trust to get all these crazy. trophies. You know, used to be you kept score, Cox. Nowadays, when you leave, everybody, have you ever been, everybody won. Everybody's winning today. Used to be, you got if you got beat, you got beat. You didn't say it was, you know, we tied. I, I never played in a tied. I never had a tied game of anything I played. All right. I, I, so I don't know. I won't get on my soapbox. This is how bad sports is with kids. I heard. I watched this kid strike out, and I heard this. His, I heard his mom or somebody say, "Don't worry about it. That's not on you." <laughs> I was thinking. Who's it on? You swung and missed three times. Who's it on? She <laughs> think, was she blaming the ref that they were bad calls? Or I'm like, okay, just don't let don't let your little honey fail. That's what I'm saying. It's this yeah. patient trophies, man. I just uh, you know, I, yeah. you know, I don't know. I get to hear some great stuff at the ballpark. Oh, I'm sure you do. I'll you get know. to hear good stuff tomorrow at Rockwood down there playing baseball all day. But yeah, I don't know. I have a great. I just sit back and laugh. <laughs> It's something else. It really is. But the, 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 well, you brought it up, and I'll, I'll close with it. When it starts pulling kids away from participating in other high school sports, that's when it becomes a problem. You know, I, I heard – I can't remember who I heard say this, but it's a great quote. I've never had a kid come back to me and say, Coach, I wish I wouldn't have played my senior year. But they've had a lot of people come back and say, "Gosh, Coach, I would give anything if I wouldn't have quit." And that's yep. a per that's a perfect example of why it's important to play multiple sports. And play all the sports you can play, man. You're going to be the next Cal Ripken or the next, you know, Randy Moss. It's like how many kids out of high school is not going to go play college football, and how many kids out of college football is not going to go to the NFL? The number they do on that NCAA commercial is it, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's you're ridiculous. not you're not going to advance. You know, it's it's very late few. Hey, Chandler, you said you had some uh, region stuff back there. Put it up for us. Do we need to take a quick break, Chandler, and then come back for that? Okay, go ahead. So you look at class uh, 1A, you look at uh, Prayer House, South Pittsburgh uh, there. Uh, so Cofield's that's ranked the top. fifth in the state. That's, a, yeah, that's the yeah, state standings right there. Cofield's ranked fifth. Uh, Oliver Springs only got seven votes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Cofield's ranked uh, fifth. Oliver Springs, big showing for them tonight. I think that's important for them to play a close game like that to realize if they play them again, that they they have got, they've got an opportunity if they play well to win. As I coach, oh, I agree with you 100. percent As a coach, that's kind of what you got. All right, Chandler, go ahead and switch it. And there's the region standings. Uh, so the Rockwood Cofield game is the region championship. Yeah, it will be for. Re, re, uh, did Oliver Springs Oliver Springs beat Rockwood though? I think. Yeah. So it'd be a three-way tie, and then they go to what overall record? I guess. And if you look at that overall record right now, it looks like it'll follow Oliver Springs' way. No, they'd both be seven and two, wouldn't they? Who? Coldfield and Oliver Springs both be 72. No, if Rockwood, if. If Rockwood beats Coldfield, it's a three-way tie. Three-way three tie, tie for first. if Rockwood. If, if, if wins the, Coldfield wins the tiebreaker. Why does Coldfield win the tiebreaker? Well, because all three have beat each other. Coldfield has beat the most teams or had a better record, overall record. Not, they would have two losses and Oliver Springs would have two losses. After week ten. 
They both five and one in the region. They'd both be eight and two overall, right? Oh, I see. That's not updated. I follow you. Yeah. So I have overall. Go ahead and switch the channel. There's class two A. There's the top ten. York, York. Have, you know, we've talked a little bit about York this year. Having a, you know, they win again tonight, I think, and uh, they just keep, you know, right on rolling, right on along. Wing T. They got a couple studs. They got a really good quarterback and a really good running back. Oh, is this Wing T? Yeah, Wing T. All right, Chandler, go ahead. And there they are in the region. Uh, so this will be who Oliver Springs and Coldfield uh, and that and, and Rockwood. This is who they will be playing in the playoffs. Is that correct? No. 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 Because this is two A. They're one A. Okay. Yeah. They would play region one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's still the same. That's not changed much. That's not changed any, yeah. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. There's Alcoa. What a surprise. I just wonder next week if that might change. No. Alcoa still stay on top, you think? Yeah, they're they're the You know, look at Meg's County. Comes up in three A and look at them. Yeah. Winners you know, win. look at Gatlinburg Pittman having a really, you know, a really good year. Uh, that Gatlinburg Pittman loss Pittman. is a bad loss. So I wonder if GP and Alcoa play each other next week. I don't know. I don't know. All right, go ahead, Chandler. And there's the standings. GP and Alcoa do not play each other next week. Uh, Alcoa Kingston play each other. Right? Alcoa and who? Alcoa and Kingston have to play each other because they're both undefeated and they're both yeah. in the same region. Yeah, they'll play each other next so week. You're right. That's going to be the... That'll be for the championship. All right, Chandler, go ahead. There's 4A. So Elizabeth is ranked over Greenville. I didn't know that. Anderson County's not even ranked in the top 10 in the state. Seven. Seven. Hey, Anderson who, County's who, record. Five and four. Five and four. Who beat... Who did Anderson County beat last year for the state championship? Oh, man, I don't know. Pay, no. Uh, it wasn't Procom, was it? Procom, that's right. All right, look yeah. at him. Eight, no. Yeah. Procom, that's right. So, Anders Kane's going to win. They've won that. That that might be the absolutely worst 4A region that I could ever remember. It's not very good. Oh, they're terrible. Anders Kane's real good, and the rest of them are bad. Just not good at all, bless their heart. Yep. All right, Chandler. Here's 5A with Knox West sitting in the top, Henry County, Centennial, some people here in there. There's Oak Ridge in there at 6 and 2 at number 8. I think Oak Ridge is just as good as Knox West, by the way. I've watched both <laughs> of them play in person. I think, I think Oak Ridge is more electric on offense. But I think Knox West has a better defense. But like Jesse says, Powell's kind of. House kind of coming. Well, look at Powell. They're right there sitting at number 10, and nobody's really talking about them. Not a lot of people's talking about them. And there they sit. And uh, so we'll see. All right, go ahead. And there's your West, Powell, Halls, Central, and Heritage. So uh, Central won that game last night over Heritage, which got them in the playoffs, knocked Heritage out. All right. There's Region 3, 5A with Oak Ridge and North City, Clinton, and Campbell County. I wonder who they go play. So they'll go play Region 4. So that would be Walker Valley. Walker Valley and all those down there. <laughs> yeah. So you update all those tonight. The North City lost. Oak Ridge jumps up. Clinton wins. Who Campbell Lenore County wins. Their season with. Who? Could Lenore City end their season with a Campbell County or Carnes and possibly lose? And Clinton would go I to the think, two? I don't. Has Campbell County played Oak Ridge yet? I think Campbell County and Oak Ridge is next Friday night. Okay. I think. Campbell so, County and Oak Ridge. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge is going to win the region because they beat Lenore City tonight. And then you've got yeah. Clinton that should that will remain in third after tonight. Cause yeah, because be, they beat Campbell County and they beat Carnes, so they're setting where they're supposed to be. Uh, yeah, Campbell County. That's a Thursday game. That's a Thursday game. So, I'm, you, I'm, 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 I'm trying to get y'all to move the show to Thursday. Night. All right, go ahead. <laughs> There's Bradley Central and uh, Oakland, and yep. I don't know. Bearden sitting in there at number six. I don't know how anybody could say Oakland's not the number one team in the state right now. I think everybody's saying it's Bradley Central because that one football player they got, whatever his name boo. is, yeah, Boo, oh, whatever. All right. 
So, Brad, so Bearden's trying to win their first region championship since 2007. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maryville, who would ever thought Maryville would be two and two in the region at the start of the year and fighting for a playoff berth? So you got right now you got Hardin Valley and uh, Farragut out. Hardin Valley started off three and zero and lost their next five. Go ahead, bud. I think that's it. Well, they lost and Hardin Valley lost tonight to Farragut. Yeah, bad. Yeah, and Farragut ended a losing streak tonight, and Hardin Valley still on that losing streak. So, uh, yeah. but anyway, hey, let's jump out and take a break, and when we come back. We'll talk UT football. Medical Clinic of Oak Ridge presents New Year's Eve 2024 Countdown. On Sunday, December 31st, 2023 at 9 p.m. to January 1st, 2024 at 1 a.m. Live band, food truck, hot air balloons, sponsored by Tennessee College of Applied Technology, Baird, the City of Oak Ridge, David Coffee, BBB Communication, and Holloway Event Company. Ball drop and fireworks. Come with your friends and family to count down the new year together. Don't miss it. Free to the public. For more information, go to fmcor.org. Local agent? I know you. I know every Saturday your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Make this spring all about enjoying the experience. When you ride on your new Ferris commercial mower featuring patented suspension technology, you'll have more than freshly manicured grass. You'll experience productivity and comfort like never before. And because you won't be slowing down for those rough spots, you'll mow more lawn in less time. Ferris, experience suspension. Your local Ferris dealer is SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. Call 865-354-0600. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel 
Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. Kathy May Martin has been making real estate dreams a reality for over three decades. Buying or selling real estate is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Choosing the right realtor is next. Thinking of buying or selling? Call Kathy May Martin at Coldwell Banker Jim Henry & Associates for all your real estate needs. Rest assured, with Kathy's knowledge and experience, you will be on the winning team. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at roanstate.edu now, and let's succeed together. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Welcome back to the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard, and we appreciate Free Medical Clinic and all of our sponsors that you saw on a couple times tonight. We've run commercials, and uh, appreciate everybody. Really appreciate Free Medical Clinic, and I've said it all year long, and I'll say it again. Don't go without seeing the doctor. Contact Free Medical Clinic, and they'll take care of you. Guarantee it. Good people, good to have on board with us. We appreciate them and appreciate all they do for us, just like we appreciate all of our other sponsors that sponsor this show and sponsor Friday Night Football. Without those sponsors, and Brad Jones will be the first one to tell you, without those sponsors, the lights wouldn't be on tonight probably. So we appreciate those sponsors. I'll say it again and again and again. Thanks. Uh, but hi, uh, Hey, look, before you go to college football. Go ahead, buddy. Um, you know, we're, we want to uh, make sure that we give credit where credit's due. The Anderson County uh, volleyball team went down and uh, competed in the state championship this past week. And they came in fourth uh, down there um, at the state tournament. Uh, got a couple cousins on that team. One was the MVP of the district in the region, and they went down there and had a successful tournament and lost, I think, uh, in three games to the uh, to the team that played for the state championship game day. But I wanted to give the Anderson County girls volleyball team a shout out uh, to their players. Powerhouse program, I'll say that. They're always going down there. I think they go about every year, it seems like, anyway. Yeah, they went for they went about six, seven, eight years there when they went to AAA and they never made a state tournament. But now they went back double A. I say never. They might have made it one or two times. But now they went back to the smaller division. They're, you're right. They're it's always a good year. volleyball program. Always a good, always volleyball, good program. volleyball program up there and uh, uh, something to be proud of. Anytime it's from right around here, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, congratulations, congratulations to the Aaron's County Girl volleyball team. All right, Cox, the hot question around here is Tennessee and Alabama tomorrow. And personally, myself, you've told me that Tennessee's not beat Alabama in 20 years at Alabama. And I don't know if the streak ends tomorrow or not. I'd be afraid. I'll just say it. I'd be afraid to bet either way, for or against. I don't think Alabama's been as excited to play Tennessee in the last 10 to 12 years as they will be tomorrow. Why do you think that? Uh, they beat them every year for, what, 10, 12 years? Uh, 
that streak ended last year. That was a huge game last year in Knoxville. Um, but, uh, you know, I think Alabama's going to be ready. You know, Saban's already came out and, you know, hey, last year they made it hard on us. It was a hostile environment. I will say this, two completely different football teams. Both of them are. Neither, neither one of them Neither one of them has had. Neither one of them has the high-powered quarterback or offense that they had the year before. I think that's what's more disappointing about Tennessee than anything is Tennessee's offense. And I really don't know who you blame it on. I mean, we do. I, I've, I've I've always been told to win an SEC, you gotta have a running game, and they we do a have game. a we do have a running game. Yeah. But you gotta be able to throw the ball a little bit. You do now. And maybe maybe. What we're getting is all we're going to get, and it's a little bit. But we've got a pretty good defense, a little bit better maybe than what everybody was anticipating because that's always been the weak link. It's been the defense in the last two or three years. But you don't have a wide receiver core. No. That will have anybody on the all-SEC team at all. So it is, it's real easy to blame Joe Melton with all the problems. He, some of them he are justified. But you can't blame them all because you can't help if a kid – he can't be held responsible if a kid drops a pass. I mean, or whatever happens. Yep. I mean, there's been some crazy things happen, but whatever happens. So, yeah. I don't know. It might come down to a special teams thing tomorrow. I think that might be advantage. Well, I don't know. Alabama's, you know, got pretty good special teams. So, I don't know. It might be just an even football game and just ever who's got the ball last and ever who doesn't make the – which this is any game. Ever who's got the ball last and don't do turnovers. And the penalties, that's who wins the game. But yeah. you can just about say that on any given any given Saturday that if the team that goes that route is the team that's going to win the game anyway. I was sitting beside a guy, um, Texas A&M game. The, the season ticket holders right beside us had sold their tickets. And the guy, uh, the two that were there beside us, you know, that game was just kind of going back and forth. And I looked at him and I said, there's going to be some – big play here, turnover, special team, something that's going to change the end of this football game, how this football game comes out. Sure enough, you down it on the one, then you return a punt. And that was the difference in the football game. Neither team yeah. offensively played good enough to win. Nope. They didn't. Well, we talk about somebody on the hot seat, Jimbo Fisher. But God, have you seen his payout? 67, I believe it's 60, 67 or – if I was a wealthy, 67, 67 or eighty million, something, sixty-seven million, I think. If I was a wealthy donor of the Texas A&M, and I had other friends that I knew I could call, I would be getting my collection together, ASAP, to get him out of there. He had, I mean, what he he literally had Jameis Winston. A year they won a national championship. Outside of maybe a couple more years, has he ever overachieved? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know who did his contract for him, but God, they did a good. Sexton, I guess the guy does them all. He now. does them all, but whew, wow. I mean, his buyout is big. Yeah. Big. So I think Tennessee struggles to win tomorrow, but I think when you have a stable of running backs like they have, if you can run the ball consistently, consistently against Alabama, first off, that's always hard to do. But if they can run the ball consistently to give Joe a little bit of time, time and play action and keep them on their heels where they're not having to throw it on second and nine and third and seven, then you've got a chance. I don't know. Last that. week, David, there was two or three balls that hit guys in the hands. That's what I'm saying. You can't that blame him. That probably cost him 50 to 80 yards worth of. You can't blame him one for was that. A 40, one was a 40-yard touchdown. Yeah, you can't blame him for that. You can blame him for a lot of things, but that's something you can't blame. I don't know that Tennessee tomorrow doesn't have the better defense. They're good. It's just me. I don't know if they got better cornerbacks. I think Alabama's cornerbacks and safeties might Man, be a little you know, bit better. But Alabama defensively used their – they just dominate. Yeah. And they're not dominating this year. I just don't think Alabama fans and Tennessee fans, they neither know what they're going to get from the guy throwing the football. Oh, I said this leaving last week and Brad sitting there. Me and Brad was talking, which quarterback? We'll know pretty quick. And we knew pretty quick Which quarterback week. tomorrow – will be able to complete the long pass that makes a difference. Because that's 
That Alabama's quarterback, that's kind of his go-to. Well, Alabama does have a receiver. I can't remember yeah. the kid's name. They do have a pretty good receiver to, to throw the football to uh, that the quarterback is, has connected up with. So, Who's uh, the kid from Oregon that's come in and just not been as good as we thought he was going to be? Where's number one? Uh, I can't. I don't keep it, up with it enough. Uh, is it, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, He's just not as good as we thought he was going to be. Thornton? It might be Thornton. Maybe. Is that right? I don't know I don't if that's know. right or not. But you're right. No, he's not been as good as everybody you lost as your, you, You're probably your only NFL prospect on offense or on the wide receiver you lost. And that's a he's a big-time possession receiver, can play SEC football, big dude. Yeah. Yeah, Brew. Uh, I think that's that's what – that kills you. I mean, I, like you said, Joe's done some bad things. He's thrown it to the opposite team when across those across the middle. You know, how much does Josh trust him? I don't know. It's hard to trust him throwing the ball across the middle when you watch him throw it. You're probably over putting your play sheet in front of your face. You know, you made a pretty good comment a while ago. I don't know if he's on there off air. You know, he, you, you see him and you think, wow, man, he just looks like, golly, what, yeah. a, what an athlete. He probably is a really good athlete. And you see him in practice. I understand in practice he really looks good too. But when you see him in game day, it's like something's not – Something's not clicking somewhere. I don't know what it is. I know this sounds crazy, and people are probably going to laugh when I say this on the air. <coughs> I went to two scrimmages, and he wore a red shirt, and he completed passes. He th he made throws like he's, like he's improved. I mean, made tough throws across the middle, put the ball on the spot on the deep pass against Tennessee's defense. The offense this spring made the defense look like, oh, no, like here we go again. But – you take that red jersey off of him, he doesn't lower his shoulder the first two times he has a chance to make first downs in the first half. And it was like somebody came over to him at some point and lit a fire under him because the next couple times he went to get tackled, he was trying to run over people. And he hurt the kid from Texas. He put the kid from Texas saying him, their best defensive player, got hurt because he ran over him. He's and done something 250 to pounds, and those, those, those DBs are 220 max. Max. That's a load, man. That's and a you're load. stepping out of bounds. It's a load. I mean, so I don't know if he's. Well, I don't blame you. I don't blame you for some of this to take care of your body. Oh yeah, or if you're running across. Yeah, the but if you, can get, if you can get five or ten more, don't you go get five or ten you more? You got to get yards. the first down. You got to get the first down. He stepped out before and yeah. that got first down. Yeah. So, but I think it's uh, Kim and Hooker the opposite. I think Hooker didn't look as good in practice, but was a gamer. I think Hooker was a gamer. No, Milton looks good in practice, but it's like when the game gets going, it goes faster than he can go. You just, you just can't take it yeah. and put it all together and put it it's, all out there. It just oh. doesn't generate. To, well, it's a little bit different. You like want you him to said. be good. You want him to be good. Yeah, you do. It's just, but it's like you just said though. You put a red jersey on him. He knows he's not going to get hit, so he can stand in there and make those throws, and he does look better. Yeah. Take that red jersey off of him in practice and yeah. let him be live. Will he, will he make him same throws? I bet the odds are he doesn't. I'm just just a little guessing. bit faster, you know. A little bit faster. You're right, man. So, is there any? Is there a game? I know Tennessee, Alabama is a big game tomorrow, and another big game tomorrow is Penn State and Ohio State. Yeah. I don't like either program, but I hope Penn State beats Ohio I State. I wish there's a way they could both lose tomorrow. Who? Ohio State and Penn yeah. State. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be. I hope Penn State gets them tomorrow. I really do. I can't stand uh, that coach up Ohio State. I just don't like him. So. Uh, they. Yeah, I don't like him. There's just something about him I don't like. Yeah, I don't. He took over a good program, and he almost beat Georgia last year. But outside of that, he's always had a couple disappointing losses. Yep. Um, he's not Urban, that's for sure. No, he's uh, not. I don't like Urban, but man, he could win. Uh, did you see that CAK Notre Dame? I know we're still talking college football. Fifty to forty-nine CAK beat Notre Dame. No, I didn't see that. That's that's wild. Uh, but anyway, back to the. Uh, and then there's a good 7.30 game tomorrow night, too, isn't there? Uh, for some reason, I thought Penn State played. Oh, it's Florida State and Duke. Florida State and Duke. Is that tomorrow night? It may, may be. Maybe it's 6 o'clock or something. Because I was just looking. I was like, man, you could sit at home tomorrow, start watching football at noon, and have really good football all day. All day long. Yeah, you could. Yeah. I think tomorrow's one of those days. There's a lot of rivalry games probably tomorrow, or a lot of you know big games tomorrow. So, But anyway. But there's only four SEC games tomorrow. I did, I did read that um, yesterday. I read that there's only four SEC football games tomorrow. Yeah, 
Okay, Tennessee and Alabama. I wonder who else. I don't have a clue who else it would be. Yeah, I, 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 I can't remember who. Much, I can't remember who it was, but I do remember it being. Um, I do. I do remember it being a kind of an odd Saturday, like some really good games, but not a bunch of them. So, David, right, folks. I'll ask you this real quick. Right, ask me. I, I thought about this the other day. Got in a big conversation with about four or five guys last week, and I said, "When I get to show my ask David this on the air." If you are an SEC team or you're an ACC team and you fire your head coach at the end of the season, do you hire Deion Sanders? Do you hire Deion Sanders? I think Georgia Tech should have hired Deion Sanders. And I'm, I'm, and I'm, you know, I've got fatigue of hearing all about Prime. I walked in tonight and you said, there's Prime. Yeah. And, but I, I just, I, I wonder, like, if you, if you're Georgia Tech, number one, why didn't you hire Dion? But moving from there, if Dion gets a job in Texas, Florida, Billy Napier's not going to make it. We all know that. And I know the Lane Kiffin to, to Florida talks happen, but what school in the South, what school or maybe, you know, Texas, South Carolina or Texas, Florida, Louisiana, which school decides they're going to hire Deion Sanders? I think whatever school that wants to hire Deion Sanders is going to call somebody and get somebody to give him a good recommendation. And I think that somebody's going to be like Nick Saban's going to say, I'd take a chance on him. He knows what he's talking about. He can coach football. He can get players to come play for you. He can revive your program. Now, you'd have to have a program that needs to be revived, uh, maybe a Vanderbilt or somebody like that. I, I don't think he's just going to go anywhere. Uh, I, I, don't think he, I don't think he leaves Colorado right now. I think he would stay at Colorado right now so he can prove, so he can prove everybody wrong that he can build a winning program. If he builds a winning program at Colorado, he don't have to have anybody recommend him. He'll get the job for his own, himself. Uh, I think I read in the 2025 class, the four of the top five quarterbacks in that class have already planned visits to Colorado. That's all you got to know right there. Quick call you on the air. Hey there. Hey. Utah, Utah USC. Is that who y'all were looking for? Actually, it was it was Duke. Uh, yeah, Utah USC is uh, that's a top I think a top twenty matchup, and then I think the other one was the uh, it is a seven thirty game Florida State. Uh, I was looking for Navy. Yeah, baby. <laughs> right hey, yeah, who's right who's Navy got tomorrow? Air Force. Air Force. Oh, Navy. that's a big game. Uh, the first leg of the Commander in Chief Trophy. So Are you going awesome. up there? That'll be awesome. Hey, I called in about the 7-on-7. Seven seven. I think it's essential that they play because you're going to build chemistry, a quarterback and his wide receivers. And I think I think it was real integral towards us uh, making it down to uh, Chattanooga last year because they did do all that 7-on-7. Seven seven. Now, we don't want it to take away from our baseball or our basketball kids, and Chris really does a good job working around that with our with our Code Blue program. But I think it's pretty important that they play. Now, are you going to get a scholarship in seven on seven? Absolutely not. Well, as a high school player, and I didn't know this. To Cox told me what goes. High school player, college coach can't even come and watch NCAA. Yeah. NCAA, right. they're not allowed to. Hey, how's your son doing? I know he's. Did I hear right? He's got to make some starts on special teams. Yeah, yeah, he's got he's got some uh, special team playing time, and he's he's really loves his company. He loves his platoon. Uh, uh, evidently, during Air Force Week, it's a whole bunch of pranks and a whole bunch of shenanigans going on. So he he's really he's really loving where he's at. He made a great decision. Well, good. Congratulations, Are you I'm getting, glad he's being he's getting to do it. Man. Are you getting to go up there tomorrow? We're here now. Oh, you're there now. I got you. Yeah, so you, did now. you do the Anderson? You didn't do the Anderson County name out, or you uh, you fly private now? <laughs> we fly private, but um, we saw uh, we. I, I mean, I know people were pretty high on the Gibbs program. I'm not. 
Yeah. I didn't think that'd be a ball game from the get go. Yeah, I didn't. And you know, you could say four A's down. I think the way I look at it is we've got too many divisions, and because we've got too many divisions, there's seven or eight decent teams in every classification, and two or three really good ones. I mean, nobody nobody wants to play Pearl Cone right now. I promise you. Well, we didn't say four A was down. We said it's all down across the board. But you're right. That's probably and you're probably right. That's probably why it's all down the way it is, just because there's so well, many classifications. It, it, it got it got diluted with too many too many classifications. But it's all down. You know, I mean, it's all diluted. Yeah, we were talking it's about like this back to three three classifications like it was in the '80s. But we don't want to cut in on the TWSAA's budget. So. There's that. Yeah. Heard that, man. Heard that. I think it'd be fun if we could just somehow get to four. Uh, I think if you could find a way to get to four, it would be great again. I mean, you know, yeah. we tried to pressure Alcoa into moving up to, uh, you know, moving up a classification. Just I think it'd be fun to see, you know, Anderson County, Alcoa, Greenville, Elizabeth, and, you know, the top end would be much better than what it is. You know, just I don't know about the I don't know about the new regime, but I'm a firm believer Gary Rankin would play negative one A football if he could. Oh, there's he no. likes winning too. He likes winning too much. Richie, I don't know if I misunderstood someone or I've been lied to my whole life. Alcoa has never played up in high school football. Oh, I can believe that. That is yeah, true. Yeah, I can believe that. That is true. They've never played up a classification in high school football. I went back I and can checked. Believe that. Yep. You know, you, if you'll remember, they threatened to come up. That's right. Everybody in town took off a couple of years ago. Yep. Lord, I mean, it was a mass exodus to go to 5A. Plus, Gibbs had been in 5A. Yeah. And it had up. some really good success because 5A was not, not as strong then as it is now. And, uh, oh, Lord, it was a mass exodus. And that's what sent us down to Chattanooga. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, – it is a uh, – it is it is watered down. It's it's just it's but you know there's more opportunity for people in state championships. And, and why I think it really matters the most is when you have teams that have no business playing in the first round of a playoff game. That's just not had a successful season. And and I'll use oh, this absolutely. I'll use this as an example. Anderson County this year is going to play a first round game against a team that probably has a losing record. You've got to yeah, go win that football year. game. What if you have one every of your year. best guys hurt that week playing a team that's not any good, but you had to play it, you had to win it, and now you've got somebody hurt playing against a team that really has no chance to beat you. But then the next week you got to turn around and play Elizabeth or Greenville. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, – I don't know. And then you, know, you were talking about uh, the skill set. One year, I was going to take one of my sons out of football for the fall to play travel baseball. It was going to be the first year of kid pitch, blah, blah, blah. And Davey heard about it, and he, he called me up, and he said, hey, listen, he goes, people can say what they want to say, but running the foot, there's a skill to catching the football. There's really a skill to throwing it. But there's a, there's a big skill in running the football, and if you're not developing constantly, you can't do that when you get to high school. Now, you might be one of those guys like Christian Okoye and just run people over, or you might be like, you know, somebody who's super fast and can run around the end until you get touched and you go down at the drop of a hat. But, a, you know, a true, you know, grit running back, he, he needs to develop each age as he's coming up. And I didn't really believe that. And then, you know, after doing what I've done with our middle school guys for the last couple of years, I, I, I do believe that they need to play at a younger age. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean it's different. I think it has a lot to do with what position you play and what's going on. But like I said, I mean, your coach right now at UT, he would not let his son play football this year. Um, yeah, but well, he played he played uh, seven on seven. Yeah, that's what I mean. But tackle football. So no. I mean, it's you know, it's all. But I mean, you can tell kids are behind when they start coming out at nine and ten or eleven and twelve, and they hadn't played when they were younger. Yeah, they're they're really behind, and we get them in sixth grade a lot. And there's, there's a lot of times you can catch them up by the eighth grade, but, you know, everybody wants a trophy and everybody wants to be a superstar <laughs> now, you know. And so it's really, it's really hard to, to, to get them to realize, hey, I'm, I'm biding my time and I'm learning here. You yeah. Know? Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Well, hey, good luck tomorrow. Thanks, man. Y'all have a good evening. Right, have see, you, bud. see you, bud. See you, bud.
All right, folks, we're going to end it up here. And uh, all right, prediction: Tennessee, Alabama. Uh, I'll say twenty-eight seventeen, Bama. Twenty-eight seventeen. Mm, I'm going to say twenty-one seventeen, Alabama. Tomorrow, we'll see. We'll see you right back here next Friday night on the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. We'll finish up the regular season. Maybe we'll be able to uh, tell us, we'll be able to tell, tell you where our teams are going around here and play, and we'll look at what our playoff future looks like here at, uh, I was going to say Channel 12, I almost said it, Channel 5. 1086. 1081 or 1086. <laughs> we'll tell you next week what our playoff future looks like on Channel 1086. We'll see you next week here on the Free Milk Clinic Friday Night School Board. Have a good weekend. The Free Medical Clinic of Oak Ridge presents New Year's Eve 2024 Countdown on Sunday, December 31st, 2023 at 9 p.m. to January 1st, 2024 at 1 a.m. Live band, food truck, hot air balloons, sponsored by Tennessee College of Applied Technology, Baird, the City of Oak Ridge, David Coffee, BBB Communication, and Holloway Event Company. Ball drop and fireworks. Come with your friends and family to count down the new year together. Don't miss it. Free to the public. For more information, go to fmcor.org. At Ferris, we want you to get the most out of your time and end each day feeling good. That's why we pioneered exclusive lawnmower suspension technology, allowing for full speed mowing, even over the roughest terrain. Grow your business by getting more done in less time with Ferris. Ferris, work hard, feel good. Found exclusively at independent Ferris dealers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know. heating, cooking, and clothes drying. Natural gas is affordable, reliable, and safe. We are proud to offer our customers a product that saves money, provides consistent service, and is a clean energy source. ORUD is your one-stop shop. We sell and install gas appliances for our customers and make it easy to add to your bill with our 0% interest financing. ORUD is your affordable energy choice, so make the game-winning play by switching to natural gas this football season. It's such a great rivalry. It's a storied rivalry with so many connections. There's five miles of separation between Oliver Springs and Coalfield. The stretch of highway is named after the late Gary Chris, a product of Oliver Springs High School and coaching legend at Coalfield High School. A bridge on that highway is named in memory for Aaron Brady Walls, a young man who played football at both schools. In 60 meetings, Oliver Springs has won 34 of those, but there have been some classics. Oliver Springs won in overtime in 2007, 19 to 16. In 1979, it took five overtimes before the Bobcats finally came out with the 2014 win. Or just six years earlier, in 1973, when Coldfield got the overtime nod, six to nothing. There have also been some blowouts, including very recent history. Oliver Springs last got a win in this contest in 2017. Since then, the Jackets have outscored Oliver Springs 190 to 13. The Bobcats burst onto the scene last season under first-year head coach Tyler Harper which led to what we thought would be an exciting game for a region championship. Coalfield slammed the door on that, though, winning 50 to nothing to win a regular season region championship, but then again 56 to nothing in the third round of the playoffs. Oliver Springs is better than last year, and Coalfield is still Coalfield. Have the Bobcats made up enough ground in Coach Harper's second year, or will the Yellow Jackets remain the king of the hill? We'll find out tonight in Week 10 of the OEB Law 
Raw game of the week. Day or night, 24-7, someone will be there to answer and give you a free consultation and get to work on your case immediately. Call 865-546-1111 or visit that website full of helpful information. It is very easy to remember. Reckontoacheck.com. That is our title sponsor, OEB Law. I'm Aaron Harvey, joined by Coach Dan Shoemaker. No relation. Oliver Springs says two losses this season, one to Kingston, thought to be one of the top teams in 3A, and South Pitt, thought to be the best team in single A. Coalfield single loss came to 3A Sequatchie County. Both teams seem okay with playing up, which should help them in tonight's game, but also moving forward. Yeah, teams get better by playing better competition, Aaron. And it's really hard to simulate real game experience in practice. So scheduling up helps your team get better and learn how to compete at a high level. Both of these teams have been tested. They've prepared for this game, and they've prepared for a game like this, a game that will likely determine a district championship tonight. There is a lot at stake for these guys. That's Coach Dan Shoemaker. I'm Aaron Harvey. We really look forward to tonight's game, and we'll break that down and let you know what's going on elsewhere, and we'll do that thanks to Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties. Elaine, a local product with integrity and know-how to take care of all of your real estate needs. If you need to buy or sell a home, give her a call at 423-617-6748. That's 423-617-6748. Stay tuned for more of the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show for our OEB Law Game of the Week. At OEB Law, our home is your home. And your family is our family. And down here, family takes care of family. Giving back and helping out whenever needed. OEB Law is proud to be from East Tennessee. OEB Law feels like home. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Kathy Mae Martin has been making real estate dreams a reality for over three decades. Buying or selling real estate is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Choosing the right realtor is next. Thinking of buying or selling? Call Kathy Mae Martin at Coldwell Banker Jim Henry and Associates for all your real estate needs. Rest assured, with Kathy's knowledge and experience, you will be on the winning team. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. 
Welcome back to the Elaine Wald of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Elaine is just under a decade of experience in real, the real estate business, and year after year, she sells millions of dollars worth of property. She serves nearly all of East Tennessee, so Coalfield fans, Oliver Springs fans, or, you know, other fans around the area, give Elaine a call or text for all of your real estate needs. That number, 423-617-6748. It's up there on the screen there, 423 423- 6196748. I'm Aaron Harvey and joined by Dan Shoemaker. We got to talk about a matchup that normally takes place earlier in the season, but it's waiting until the penultimate week this year. It, it's normally one of the biggest matchups in the state and even made it to a national audience televised on ESPN in 2012. Of course, I'm talking about Maryville and Alcoa. These two teams have dominated this millennium in their respective classes, and Maryville's dominated this series, winning 64 of 94 total games going back to 1927. But Alcoa last won, or won last season 27-14. Tornadoes host this year, and they're doing pretty well, sitting at 7-0. Maryville, on the other hand, is underperformed, losing three games already. Does that make you want to take Alcoa in this game? Well, hang on a sec. Bearden is a common opponent, and the Bulldogs led Alcoa until the final plays of that game. The opposite handed, or the opposite happened when Maryville met up with them, and the Bulldogs got the victory by a single point in overtime. But let's also point out that Maryville lost to West 21-14. Alcoa beat them 24-7, so, yeah, I'm taking Alcoa to cover spread. Pen, 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 oh, what? I pen think, ultimate. Pen, I, I, I think that means like the next to the last, maybe. Listen at it. Week 10 for the week 11 or the 11 week season. That's it. Uh, I'm just a humble football coach. I got you. I, you know, but I, I, yes, this is late for that matchup very much so, but it will still be standing room only. Uh, that, that's that's a $70,000 gate, they tell me over there for one ball game. They split that gate every year. So, that, you know, that's, that's a big chunk, right? Uh, I think that Alcoa is on point and Maryville struggling, so Alcoa has the advantage. Uh, smart money is picking Alcoa if you're a betting man, but I think it's going to be closer than a lot of people think. Well, to be cliche, when you get into a rivalry game, you just throw those record books out the window. And so I, I know those two schools don't like each other, and so it should be a lot of fun tonight, even if uh, Alcoa is able to get the win, because I do think that that is it should be a close game uh, like you referred to. You know, a 4A region championship on the line tonight, specifically in Region 2. Gibbs at 7-1 and one is off to its best start since 2010. The single blemish on the Eagles schedule came to a pretty doggone good Halls team, which also sits at 7-1. and one. But Coach Brad Turner's team is having to go to the bullpen tonight to take on Anderson County. The Mavericks are 4-4, four and four, but I can say with confidence that there's not a better four-loss team in the state, and they'll be going for a sixth straight region title. Not to mention, Davey Gill squad has gotten better week over week. Can the school that gave us Trevor Bain, Morgan Wallen, and Kenny Chesney break AC streak? Well, if it was going to happen, it better happen this year because there's been really a lot of talk about the, the resurgence of this Gibbs team, you know, and how much better they've been. Uh, but you can never count Anderson County out. They play hard. They play tough at home. They play good defense. They can uh, run the ball. They can throw the ball. I think the advantage here goes to AC, and I feel that the Mavs will pull the win out probably late in the fourth quarter. We'll be keeping an eye on that score, so we'll let you know throughout the game. You know, Region 2 and Single A is all over the place. Looking at the standings in the remaining games, it looks like you could end up with a three-way tie for first between Coalfield, Oliver Springs, and Rockwood. But get this, you could also end up with a three-way tie for the final two playoff spots between Rockwood, Greenback, and Oakdale. If you notice, the team in both of those scenarios was Rockwood. The Tigers play in Oakdale tonight. Win that one, and you've got a chance to tie for first. You know, also in that scenario, after tiebreakers, you'd still finish third. Now, for the Eagles, if Coach Boyle's team can be ahead at zeros, the Eagles would need help because Greenback would have to lose to Oliver Springs, but a Week 11 victory would set up a three-way. In that scenario, after the tiebreakers, the Eagles would actually finish third, and Rockwood would be fourth. A loss tonight, though, and Oakdale's likely set to finish sixth. It's a calamity that I'm here for it. As far as that game tonight goes, you'll have contrasting styles as Rockwood line it up. They try to run to control the clock. And Oakdale's going to be slinging it. Joe Summers has over 1,800 yards passing and 22 touchdowns. Nehemiah Cooney has over 1,100 yards receiving and 13 touchdowns. Rockwood has shown struggles against the pass this season, and it may come down to whether or not Oakdale can stop the run game. You know, I remember those days of trying to figure out where you're finishing and, you know, 
if you're third or fourth, where you got to travel to in that other region and how they're finishing. And the combinations and the permutations are really uh, just limitless on this playoff picture. At the end of the night, though, at the end of tonight, it'll, it will start to be a whole lot clearer. And I also remember coaching against a, uh, a guy at Oakdale named uh, David Cooney, who is Nehemiah Cooney's dad. He was a hard-nosed player, too, and he, you had to account for him when you were game planning for, for Oakdale. Uh, Nehemiah's a lot the same way. He, he's uh, a big weapon when they're on offense. He does a lot on defense as well. Uh, if Rockwood can hold the ball, grind the clock, and keep the top on the defense, uh, they've got a good chance. But if Oakdale gets the throw game going and uh, Cooney gets loose, it could be a long night for the Tigers. Yeah, we were talking to, in pregame, and you alluded to the fact that a lot of what Oakdale likes to do is give Cooney one-on-one -on -one matchups, which he's very good at winning. 1,100 yards for Cooney. Summers has thrown for over 1,800, which means every other person who's caught a pass is only accounted for 700 of the 1,800 yards that Summers has thrown for. So uh, Rockwood will definitely have to keep a cap on him tonight to uh, be able to win that game. So I tell you what, we've got a couple other things we're going to go at, and then I took my best uh, 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 chance or uh, best guess at what's going to happen in the playoffs and playoff standings. So we'll go over that a little bit too when we go over region standings. And of course, we got to preview tonight's game, a huge rivalry game between Coalfield and Oliver Springs. We're at Harlan Wall Stadium, so we will do that when we get back to the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Patterson's Appliances has been helping families like yours find quality home appliances from trusted brands including Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid for over 55 years. Our knowledgeable appliance specialists know how to outfit your kitchen or laundry room with the right appliances to meet your needs. We service what we sell with our own in-house factory trained service technicians. And for the DIYers, our parts department is always ready to help customers find the appliance parts they need. Patterson's Home Appliances. Because we care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. takes care of family, giving back and helping out whenever needed. OEB Law is proud to be from East Tennessee. OEB Law feels like home. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians, or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. And welcome back to Coalfield with the Elaine Wall of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Elaine did just shy of $10 million in sales a year ago, but she's a multi-million dollar producer perennially, serving nearly all of East Tennessee, some Morgan, Scott, Roan, Anderson. Y'all need a real estate agent? Call or text my friend Elaine Wall of East Tennessee Properties, 423-619-6748. 423-619-6748. I'm Aaron Harvey with our favorite doctor-coach combo, Dan Shoemaker. Let's do a lightning round. I'm going to give you a matchup, and you tell me 
me who you ben think Jackson, wins and possibly I even a brief snippet of info of that matchup and maybe 15 words or less. All right, here we go. We'll do that. Midway at Harriman. Harriman, I think they're ready to break through tonight. All right, McMinn County at Powell. Powell tops the Cherokees, I think, in a close one. Halls at West. The clock will strike midnight for Cinderella. I, I think West by a lot. All right, Carnes at Clinton. Dragons over the Beavers by a couple of scores. Lenore City at Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge and a rebound win. Uh, how about a bonus matchup just for fun, just to test you? Whitehaven at Collierville. Collierville and a shootout. Whitehaven <laughs> needs to win this one to keep their playoff hopes alive, but not tonight. And you know what? We didn't prep that ahead of time, so like for the fact that you knew that, no, <laughs> LOL. That's <laughs> uh, Some notes for me, just to add to the fun. Halls is 7-1 and one on the year and is likely headed on the road for the first round of the playoffs if it can't pull off a win against West. If Clinton defeats Carnes tonight, the Dragons will finish third in the region. If Clinton loses, the Dragons are going to miss the playoffs. Powell and McMinn County could have a rematch in the semifinals of the playoffs if both teams went on a run, and that game could likely be, or would likely be, at McMinn County. Uh, Oak Ridge and Lenore City, they're playing for a region championship tonight. The loser will be guaranteed second place regardless of whatever happens next week, and we might be looking at a scenario where either of these teams could rest players in week 11. And on a final note, I had a roommate once, and he was from Collierville. So, now let's look at those region standings, because even though we've got just two weeks remaining, there's so many possibilities out there. And so, we'll start Region 2, 1A. On a quick note, uh, looking at Region 1 of uh, this uh, region here, it looks like it's set in place, and it normally is about this time of year. Looks like Cloudland's going to win that one, Jellico's going to finish second, and then North Green is going to finish third Unica fourth unless some craziness happens that we don't expect. So basically the winner of tonight's game is probably going to have a home game against Unica and the loser of this game probably going to have a home game against North Green. I'm talking tonight, Coalfield, Oliver Springs. You see them Ladies top of the region standings there. Rise, kindly remove your hats. Oh, and before we get more into this, let's, let's hear our national anthem. On Tuesday night, we lost Cofield alumnus Andy Schubert after a year-long battle with cancer. Andy was a 1994 graduate of Cofield High School and was a three-sport standout during his time at CHS. Andy earned all district honors in football, basketball, and baseball and was named all East Tennessee and all state in football during his junior and senior seasons. Andy kicked 93 point after kicks in his career, third highest in school history. In his senior season in 1993, Andy caught 62 passes for 1,603 yards and scored 19 touchdowns for head coach Gary Chris and was tied for 12th in the state in scoring with 152 points scored. At this time, we ask that you join us in a moment of silence as we honor Andy Schubert. Thank you. Please remain standing as we honor America, her veterans, and the servicemen and women who fight to keep her free. Veterans are always welcome to render a salute as we present our national anthem. Tonight's featured performer is Mrs. Sandy Sheldon. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early Oh, 
Does that Star Spangled Banner yet wave? Yes, it does. It is a windy night, so you get a beautiful view of the drawn-out flag there. We talked a little bit about how the region, this region could stack up. This one is a mess, and we'll know a lot more after tonight. But, yeah, so the winner of this game is going to be first, and the loser of this game is going to be second because even after tiebreak, there could be a three-way tie for first, but even after those tiebreakers, uh, actually, we ask your cooperation in ensuring a smoke-free environment. Yeah, that's true. So, like I said, we'll we'll know a little bit more after tonight. Let's let's leave it at that and then go on. All right. So, looking at Region Two Two A, this is York Institute. All they got to do is win against either Wartburg or Polk County, and they secure that first spot. Number two is going to be the winner of Oneida and Bledsoe County. Number three is going to be the loser of Oneida and Bledsoe County, and number four is going to be Polk County. In the Unlikely scenario, York loses its last two games, which again are against Wartburg and Polk County. Uh, that means the winner of Oneida and Bledsoe is going to win that region. So again, unlikely, but big, big game right there. Could happen. So Region 2, 3A, the winner of Alcoa and Kingston is going to win that one. The loser is going to finish second. Now for third, the winner of the AC, I'm sorry, the AE Union County game is going to finish third unless Scott upsets that's Austin East because Austin East still has to play Union County and Scott. And then so the loser of the Anderson, or the Austin East, I've got AC on my sheet because I did that wrong. The loser of Austin East Union County is going to be fourth unless, again, Scott High upsets Austin East. So there's where that one's going to line up. Region 2, 4A, you've got the winner of Anderson County and Gibbs. They're likely first. The loser is likely second. Halls could create a three-way tie with win against West and Central if also West beats Powell. Likely, though, you're looking at the winner of Powell West. Uh, hold on a minute. That's a different region, isn't it? That yeah. Is, that is. So, Anders County Gibbs, they're going to be first. What I'm talking about is, is this one right here. Yeah. Halls could create that three-way tie with a win against West and Central if West beats Powell. Likely, though, the winner of Powell West is first, loser second, unless West loses both against Halls and Powell, which would mean Halls is second and West is third. I don't think that's going to happen, but it could. In Region 3, the winner of Oak Ridge and Lenore City is going to win the region. Likely, the loser is going to finish second, all right? And then three through five depend on the remaining games. Likely, though, if I'm a betting man, I'm going to say Clinton third, Campbell County is fourth, as long as Clinton beats Carnes tonight. So it's Region 2, 6A. Bearden and Bradley Central, the winner of that is going to win that region. That's taking place in week 11. Bearden and Bradley Central loser is going to be second unless Cleveland upsets Bradley Central tonight. Likely Maryville is going to be third, and likely Cleveland is going to be fourth unless some upsets happen. So, like you said earlier, we'll know a lot more after tonight, but, man, that playoff picture wide open for some of them. Yeah, you know, and, and the nice part is this thing wasn't decided in week four in week five and these Cash games are meaningless. Right. These games are really Jackson, important. They are. So eight, let's continue seven, our Lane Walton of Eastern Properties pregame show by going ahead and jumping into our preview of this one. 5.5 miles and a lot of spirited hate separate Coalfield and Auburn Springs. A heated series that's seen multiple players play for both schools over the years. We mentioned the Gary Chris connection as well. Coach Chris graduated from Auburn Springs but left a name for himself in these parts for what he did on the sidelines and in the classroom. This is a small town high school football at its finest and we get set to preview this one with the last segment of our Lane Wall to BCC Properties pregame show. Uh, Coalfield has won the toss and they will defer to the second half. So we mentioned earlier Auburn Springs started the season, a road trip to South Pittsburgh and then followed it up with a game against Kingston. First week was 56 nothing loss. The second week was a little better, 45-20. But back in week two when that happened, 
I had no idea that Kingston's defense was would be as good as it was this season, nor did I know that Kingston would bounce back the way it did. You see 45-20, that's actually impressive because before last week against Men Central, no other team had scored more than 14 on those Yellow Jackets. And since then, OS has been on a tear, winning every game since then by an average of 27 points. Yeah, Coach Harper really challenged this team early and, and, and has watched them grow and develop. They are, they're a young team, and especially in spots, but over the last nine weeks, those players have grown up and gotten better. The Bobcats hit their stride, and now they're playing some pretty good football right now. Coalfield, on the other hand, they're Coalfield. You have to go back to 2009 to get a losing season, but since 2020, the Yellow Jackets are 41-7. and Coalfield's only loss this season was on the road against Sequatchie County, a 5-3 and Class 3A team that has a chance to win its region, and that was a tight ball game for almost the entire game before the winning team finally Finally pulled out the 31-14 win. Yeah, when this season started, there were a lot of questions around this Coalfield team, too. Uh, but looking at their body of work with the way they played their schedule, uh, they found some answers. Uh, they run well. They pass well. Coach Wilson, the offensive coordinator, does a good job of finding what works. Defensively, Coach Jones has these guys giving up only 4.4 points in their region schedule per game. You know, from a, tremendous. Yeah, from a style tam- standpoint, Coalfield's going to throw it a little bit more with run game mixed in. Auburn Springs is going to run it with a little bit of throwing mixed in. That's what we know because Luke Treese, the quarterback of this team, thrown for 1,400 yards and 18 touchdowns, and Jaden Bunch, their leading rusher, has just shy of 500 yards on the ground, but Auburn Springs, on the other hand, Mason Day has 716 rushing yards, and Liam Bokey has 800 yards through the air and 11 scoring touchdowns. It will be a contrast in styles for sure. Some teams run the ball to set up the pass. Other teams pass the ball to set up the run. My thoughts that each team is going to do what they do, and they're going to try to get on track early. There was a little bit of rain today, so wet field could be a factor. I don't think so, though. The rain moved out a lot earlier than we thought it would, so I don't think that that's going to be near the factor that we anticipated it was. So I tell you what, I'm in need of a doctor. Dr. Dan, your do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts. Uh, For Oliver Springs, do's, first thing, control the clock, went on first down. 